I know. I just started the diet and I'm like, uh, what, today's day five, I think. I'm down seven pounds. But you know how it is when you start. It's probably mostly water. Yeah, I was, get that <clears throat> I was eating I like a lot of garbage. Thing. Yeah. When you eliminate that, you realize. I had no idea how much garbage I was eating. And then I was like, holy fuck. I'm like, I'm, uh, I'm really fat. <laughs> <laughs> you found yourself not reaching for certain shelves in the fridge. Oh, I am, you know, I was with, I did it. So I did a podcast with Jay. Yeah. And when I told Jay I wanted to compete one more time, because I haven't competed since 2017, Jay was like, I don't know how you're going to do it, bro. He was like, I can't imagine going back to the life after retiring. And I haven't retired, but it's been so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I kind of, Ben, what's up, brother? Oh, he's Ben. Ben, what's up, brother? How are you? Hey, man, I'm good. How are you? You look better today. You're in like your, it's brighter and you're, we got your bandana on. You look good. <laughs> Affecting the setup. It's oh, I like the shirt. How come I didn't get mine? Somebody was supposed to send me one of these fucking things. It's, it's on its way. It's on its way. All right. It's on its way. Just, um, but it's uh, not available for, it was done as a, I know. Out there. So, because people will ask, well, where do I get one? And uh, so basically, the girl that did it, she wants to remain anonymous. Yeah. She just did it for her friends and family. Um, and what size is yours? Uh, small, three, small. Three. So, <laughs> As I say, if that's the four and you're filling it out like that, I was gonna be so fucking envious. It's a fucking medium at best. It's a three. <laughs> it's a three XL. I was, I was gonna say, if that's the four and that's looking that snug, I'll be pissed. No, I'm I'm down way. I'm not filling the four out like this. Christ. <laughs> speaking <laughs> speaking of shirts, what do you guys think? This is our. Oh, that's nice. I like it. Our Fourth of July, hostile release. Yeah, I mean, it's not a Canadian flag, but whatever. Who cares? It's, a, it's the fucking 4th of July. Why would it be Canadian? <laughs> well, from Canada and hostile is Canadian. <laughs> but it's for the American. It's hostile is not Canadian. Hostile is actually American. We're registered and shipped from the U.S. Oh, is that, is that for tax purposes? Uh, no, it's because my bulk of my fan base is in the U.S. But yeah. no, it, it's celebrating the American holiday. Doesn't that doesn't make sense to you? It makes yeah, sense it to me, but it's... This is what such a crazy thing. So you're telling me because I'm Canadian, I can't celebrate. I can't celebrate with my American fans. Do you know what it is? It's just because all the fucking American t-shirts are the same. <laughs> all, the, all the what? All the American t-shirts are the same. You just literally flag and then bang your supplement company it, on it. Uh, like fucking yeah, but ours is cool. Ours is cooler <laughs> than the rest. I think it's like yeah, Team yeah. America. Yeah, yeah. everything's Listen. like so American. But you gotta admit, okay, you guys are from the UK. I'm from Canada. You got to admit, there's something pretty fucking cool about, like, <clears throat> the patriotism. It can be, it can be, like, it can be overwhelming. But, but at the same time, there's something kind of cool about the way, like, how much they love their country. Yeah, I suppose so. No? I, I think for a country, I, I had this conversation with my wife. For don't forget, country, don't forget where your fans come from. <laughs> so... Yeah, but the fans I give a shit about are back home. So, you know, I'm oh, joking. Fuck. I'm joking. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, relax, relax, relax. <laughs> so I had a conversation with my wife about this, and I said, I do think it's pretty cool how, I mean, Britain is patriotic to an extent, but it's nothing like America. And America seems to have this, like, deep-rooted patriotism, even though it's, it has no history really to speak of, right? It's, it's a very young country. Young, yeah. And everyone here is an immigrant, right? Essentially, aside, aside from Native Americans, no one is American, right? Well, I don't know if they're, I they're, agree with no, that. You, you know what I mean. I'm Techni not, technically, yes, but not really. Right, but there's no, like, ancient ancestry No, here. no, yeah, I agree. And that's why I think it's pretty cool that everyone here has that, like, hardcore, like, the flag is fucking everywhere, right? It's, yeah. You can't escape it. Yeah. But it's such a new, young country. It doesn't... Uh, like, versus England, which has, like... Goes back thousands of years, and we had a massive empire. Yeah. It's just, it's just different. Yeah. I'm going to say, though, and, and I know my Canadian fans are going to fucking shit on me for this, but I'll say the same thing about the Lebanese flag. The American flag and the, and the UK flag are cooler. Like, the way they're... Just the look of the flag is yeah, nicer. Yeah, yeah. The Canadian flag's a fucking maple leaf. What am I going to do? How, what kind of t-shirt design am I going to make with a maple leaf on it? No, that's true. Or if I did like the Lebanese, the Lebanese flag's got like a cedar tree. Like, what am I going to do with that? You know, I did find out, and I don't know whether this is true. It's just what I heard. 
that the American, you know, the American national bird is the eagle, right? The bald yeah. eagle. It's yeah. like a fucking cool bird. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I heard at one point, I don't know which president it was, he wanted to make the national bird a turkey. Yeah, that, I think I heard that before too. Yeah. That, wouldn't have, that wouldn't have been good. <laughs> Imagine that there would be a very different look and feel. <laughs> like you, you go into the Red Common offices, right? You see yeah, it, right? Aaron's stuff. got that big fucking... He's got yeah. that big fucking eagle on, on his desk. Right? Yeah. Imagine yeah. he's got this turkey. This <laughs> turkey. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Anyway, I think it's ridiculous. You know, it's funny. What you just did is, is that's racist, what you just did to me, Ben, I think. Why? I don't, I don't know if it's racist, but I'm going to just say that word anyway. So <laughs> sometimes, like, I have, I have Muslim fans, obviously, right? And I'm not, I'm not a practicing Muslim. I was, I was born into a Muslim family, but I'm not fucking religious. So, like, at Christmas time, I'll wish all my fans, like, a Merry Christmas. I'll put out, like, a Merry Christmas or whatever. And I, some of my Muslim fans get angry. And they're like, why are you wishing them a Merry Christmas? You're not, <laughs> you're not Christian. And I'm like, why the fuck are you angry? Because I'm wishing somebody else. Yeah. Merry, like, it doesn't make sense. And you just did that to me because of my because of my shirt. I'm not allowed to celebrate their holiday with them, even though <laughs> even though they make up eighty percent of my fan base. Oh man. right, but I I'm being racist towards you personally as an individual, not as a race. <coughs> it's different. <laughs> my, mine's a personal attack on you. It's a personal Nothing attack. Else. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, no. before before you got on, me and uh, James were talking about my diet. I'm five days in. And I have forgotten what it's like to be a bodybuilder because oh, I tore my tricep last May or June, I think, end, end of May, I think. So it's been about a year or more. And uh, I haven't had like a proper bodybuilding diet or training since the tear. It's, it's been four meals a day, five meals a day, lots of pizza, lots of McDonald's, just like a shit. Like I couldn't get myself back on track. So when I decided to start the diet, I'm like, okay, I, I need to get to do to, to the show and I need to start the diet. So I did. And now I'm finding I'm starving. I'm like, cause there's no more shit in my diet. All I did, like, yeah. I didn't, I didn't really cut all my calories. I just pulled out all the crap. Right. And then I, I'm not snacking. Like, you know, it's not even just the crap, you know, sometimes like in the off season, if you're hungry, like an hour after your meal, you go grab an apple or something. Yeah. I cut all that out too. So there's no snacking and there's no shitty food. Now, now I'm interested to know the exact diet like you did last time when you got it up on the screen. Like, I, want, I want to know what food I'm eating. I actually, I actually don't, I actually don't have an exact diet. Oh, for fuck's sake. Are you doing that, your own? That pro probably, that probably fucks with your head big time, James. You need oh, to like. <laughs> are you doing? Are you doing your own? I'm doing my own. I'm doing my own. For, like this is the thing. I don't normally diet for more than twelve weeks. Yeah. But because I'm like way behind the eight ball right now, I decided to start at sixteen. So I was going to do the first four weeks on my own, and see how it goes, and then have John keep an eye on me from there on in. Gotcha. John Meadows, for those of you who don't know, but. So, but it's not an exact diet, but I have a, a pretty, I'm, okay, put it this way. There's three chicken meals, seven, seven ounces of chicken, 200, 250 grams of rice. Uh, there's one tuna meal, two cans of tuna, 250 grams of rice, tablespoon of olive oil. And there's two egg meals, three eggs, three whole eggs and uh, 12 egg whites with cream of wheat, which I want to tell you guys, all these people are messaging me about cream of rice and Nobody can find it in the grocery store or if they order on Amazon, it's like super expensive. I just decided to buy cream of wheat and it's fucking great. It's yeah, like it's much more common, isn't it? Oh, it's like, first of all, it's way cheaper. It's easier yeah, to, yeah. it's easier to find and it's more beneficial for you. The only think, thing. Uh, sorry, sorry, go. I, was just, I think flex likes cream of wheat. Yeah. It, the only issue with it is the digestibility for some people. If they're, wheat, want it, it can really screw them up. I think mm -hmm. in, a, in, I think yeah, in, um, I think if you're in the off season, you're eating like a fuckload of food, it might be an issue. But when you're dieting, you know how hungry you are and your body like, your body yeah. kind of like burns through everything really, really efficiently when you're eating properly. Yeah, Especially but if they've got wheat intolerance, if they've got wheat intolerance, it's going to cause a lot of inflammation. So the, Whereas the, the cream of rice, isn't gonna, you're not going to. Yeah, so yeah. It, if you don't have that intolerance, cream of wheat, go for it because it's cheaper, mm -hmm. easier to get. It's just better, and it's better for you. It's the same. Yeah, it's got more fiber. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to. Fiber, more iron, more like. Have you gentlemen found that the time of day as well, though, when you eat certain foods like that can affect how it is uptaken? Like I find cream of rice or anything rice based first thing in the morning. Like if, it, if I eat it then, I never get any issues. But if I put it somewhere later in the day, perhaps after two or three meals, I get a bit backed up. I'm, you guys okay. That. I'm okay with rice, but I know what you mean with cream of rice. Mm. 
but it couldn't be, it might not be the cream of rice itself. Cause when I make cream of rice, I add sweetener yeah. and I, I usually add a tablespoon of peanut butter and you know, so who knows if it's the cream of rice or maybe just the added sweeteners and all that shit. Right. You know, I've, uh, I've recently fixed an issue I was having. Hmm. It's my, I, I, I'm going to guess that a lot of people have this. Um, and it came from, so I started using trend, right? Yeah. And then I started getting more and more like acid reflux and a burn. Like a lot of people get it from using orals and things like this. Yeah. And I was like, well, okay, I get that I'm getting this issue. And my default is if I'm a client, I tell me, I tell myself, take it out. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so yes, that's true. And that would work. But why is it happening? So I started like researching and started kind of experimenting on myself. And I think I fixed the issue. How? It's a histamine issue. What does that mean? So I don't know exactly the mechanisms of it, but actually I spoke to Dr. Dean about this probably a year and a half, two years ago. Yeah. And he said, try taking just the antihistamine. Well, yeah. that works. But then I started going, the last week or so I started researching. It's actually a H2 histamine issue. Yeah. And it's a DAO enzyme, which DAO breaks down histamine in the body. Okay. So histamine is released as a inflammatory response, right? And I, you know, I've had a lot of this midsection issue. And there's certain foods that are like, my pre-workout recently has been, um, I had a banana in it. And I'd get like, I can't do it. I would just sit yeah. here and I'd feel this like, Anyway, so I was like, well, I'm not going to change my diet. I'm going to see if I can fix the histamine issue. Yeah. And I bought a DAO enzyme and I bought a H2 histamine blocker. I'm You're golden. Good. Yeah, like my stomach's tighter, like my midsection's tighter. Yeah. And I can eat, I can eat a banana now because a banana would set me off every time. It, Why don't, it, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it just be easier just to not eat the banana? Well, banana is just an example because... Or, or banana, as you would call it. A banana. Uh, <laughs> It's just an example of a, of a food on the spectrum that was very inflammatory t for me. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, my body yeah. wasn't digesting it. But there were other foods in there. Like I was finding if I had my first rice meal, I'd be fine with. This is why I brought it up. But then my second rice meal of the day, I would get really like yeah, yeah, yeah. acid reflux burn. And it's because when I put the tray in, and it, I think it's a histamine issue because I can eat all my meals now. I put a DAO enzyme in the 15 minutes before. And the DAO breaks down histamine. You know what I was thinking the whole time you were telling me that story? Oh, God. I don't think me and Ben could pull, or me and James could pull off the headband. <laughs> yeah. Luke used to say the same thing. Like, you wear the most ridiculous shit and get away with it. I don't know. I want to wear a headband like that, but I don't think I could pull it off. I think. I think you do. No, I don't know. You're, you're already getting shit for the Muslim hat, man. <laughs> there is that. There is that. James, can you pull off that headband? I don't know. Uh, James, where's your, where's your bandana? The, the no, bandana's the, different. That's a headband. Like, no, yeah, my English one. The UK one, yeah. I mean, this is actually just a t-shirt I cut off. Really? I got, yeah. I, I, cut the bottom, I cut the bottom of the, 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 the bottom off and then yeah. just snipped it in half and tied it up. And then tied up? Mm -hmm. I'm going to try that. Next time, yeah. next week, next week when we do the podcast, I'm going to be wearing... Like, just gonna like a, you're just going to like a, like a guy that's wearing a do-rag on like... <laughs> Someone that's trying to be ghetto and it's not going to work. I think you have to have hair to pull that off. Yeah, I like I like a bandana because if I've got a headache and I tie something tight around, it gets rid of it. Do you uh, do you wear bandanas? No, but I, I have done. Yeah, normally it's when I've got a headache. I do. Yeah, what, James I, James wears the proper like paisley print one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I want to wear. Yeah, I used to. Yeah, it's but this is a couple of years ago though, Ben, isn't it? Yeah, that was like after your Kilimanjaro kick. This is like 2016, 15. Yeah. I can't pull those off either. I always wanted to wear a, a bandana, and I'm like, it just doesn't fit, doesn't suit my image, I guess. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, James James can pull it off. James can. You can't. You, you're shit. James can put it off. <laughs> oh, you made me feel good about myself. I'm going to go and get um, some, on Amazon and buy some. So, okay. So, the, the elephant in the room is James weighs 295 fucking pounds, and he's <laughs> lean. How the fuck is that possible? Because I'm 280, and I'm fat. How are you so big? What's happening? What are you doing? <laughs> are, not, you do, are you doing like are you doing like twenty IUs of GH? Then I'm doing fucking GH four times a day, IGF before bed. Wait a minute! Uh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! I'm curious now. Okay, I've I've never I've heard this before. We have to break it down one by one because okay, go people people are like going to ask questions. So I've always either done GH in the morning or at night or yeah. both. If I was doing like 
you know, six or eight I use, I would split them in half and do one yeah, yeah. one other. So you're doing four. So how much total I use are you doing? So I I'm not doing four. I'm just taking the piss. I'm doing two shots. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I do uh, two and two. Oh, okay. Two. Two uh, before cardio in the morning, then two post training. That's normal. Oh, okay, and you found it works post training? Uh, I don't really know. I find it a bit of an inter in uh, not an interference, uh, a bit of a pain in the ass with that window. Because I, I, my understanding again, like you, is with GH is that not to eat so close to it. Yeah. So I always like tend to like to have a bit of a fasting period, but obviously yeah. immediately after training, you're banging in a shot of GH, and then you've got to have protein and then carbs and. I don't know. I just don't really like that. I like the cardio one because you know that you're guaranteed that period of time with no fucking uh, food. No, oh, yeah. I, I the morning can, I, one. can I say this an old go. school misconception? Yeah, 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 go ahead. So there's a misconception of that, right? So the theory is insulin blunts growth hormone release, right? Yeah, go on. Well, insulin is not going to blunt ex exogenous GH. No, ex that's the thing. It's exogenous. Oh. And, and, and when you put the two together, so I did a little experiment of this. You can actually time... GH and insulin together to spike IGF-1. Yeah, you're telling really? so, Yeah, when you're having it post-workout and then you're having your post-workout shake and carbs, you're actually um, oh creating an IGF spike from that higher than if you weren't to eat. Can I that, say that, something that, before that, we continue? That's usually when you have your GH beforehand, isn't it? Yeah, you've got to say it's about 30 minutes. It's got about a 30 minute lag. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Sorry, guys. I just want to say this is not, we're not giving advice. This is no, like no. The, the show's disclaimer. We're just, I have to, man, because we'll get sued. So this is literally just entertainment and this is what we may be doing, but we're not you advising say, anybody else to do this. You yeah. say we'll get sued. This is your channel. You'll get sued. <laughs> <I'll> get sued. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's get that clear. I can see whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> You're going to get in trouble. <laughs> Anyways, so. Okay, okay so, so go on. Yeah, so basically, I mean, there's two ways to do that. Like, I would, when I was messing around with this, I'd actually pin the growth hormone intramuscular because that way you get it on set slightly quicker and faster, right? And yeah. harder. Yeah. And then I'd actually pin the insulin uh, subcutaneous because then it just slightly slows down. And if you can get those two peaks of the curve to, to elevate at the same time, it creates the cascade for IGF-1 to spike. So you're saying GH and then insulin half an hour later? Sort of. In layman's terms. It, it, layman's it, terms. If you're going to go close to, if you're going to, if you're going to put them both subcutaneous, GH, sub, yeah, 30 minutes before, then insulin. But if you're not, if you're going to do intramuscular and subcutaneous, you can do it at the same time. 10, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's near enough. They're going to be. What beating. if you don't? What if you don't? What if like I don't take insulin though? I don't like insulin. So what? Like, so your your so your carbs are going to do it. Your your post your carbs are doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what I'm saying. With James having, he might be running insulin. I don't know if he is, but his post workout shake, where he's taking those carbs in the sickly dextrin or whatever, that's elevate. Well, sickly dextrin won't elevate it, but if he's taking in some rice cakes or glucose or jam, whatever it is, I think you're having jam post workout, right? Yeah, normally I'd have uh, jam and oh yeah, I would have jam and rice cakes. Right, so that's spiking his insulin, and then he's taking the growth hormone right after he's training. So actually, he's getting that. The the, the curves of the peaks of the two curves are going to match up quite. Again, quite. it's funny, isn't it? Isn't it, Ben? Because it's funny because these things that like, we can bring to the surface, but obviously our coaches do them without even raising the, the reason. Because right. like you said that just there, you said that just there, and then I realized what Patrick does, mm -hmm. but I don't. I don't even really ask why, but but I kind of know. So, yeah. what about? I always felt like I got more benefit if I took, like when I take my growth at night, I wake up and I feel tighter. And when I would take it in the morning, it makes me feel more full throughout the day. That's why I like splitting the morning and night. Is that, is it, am I wasting my night shot? Like, should I be doing a post-workout? I don't think so. I mean, well, well, as a coach, you're a coach, Ben. What would, would you advise somebody if they were doing it? Well, how would you advise somebody to take the growth? The same way James is or? Yeah, well, look, if you're a pro and you're going all out, I have you run two, two, and two, right? Oh, so you go morning, yeah. morning post-workout, and night before bed. I mean, yeah, you're not, if you're a pro and you, you're not missing, right? There's, there's yeah. no – it's not excessive at 6IU anyway. I mean, I, I think once you're over eight is when you're – No, smart. six isn't excessive, no. Yeah, I think six is a, is a nice number. You know, that's not terribly high, and yeah. um, you're not going to get those horrible negative side effects with it, but you can also – 
make use of it through your, in the in the morning fasted you can make use of it the cardio you can make use of it post workout spiking the IGF yeah. and you can make use of it in the evening yeah um because i do find it, it gives a better sleep pattern as well yeah so, so what so aside from the gear what else is going on that patrick's doing is just a ton of food or what i think his training's i think his training's very responsible for the result i think yeah. the sst i do think it is um you're just forced to train to your you you just are forced to train as hard as you can but yeah. you as long as and as long as you're monitoring you know your rest and um your nutrition alongside that then it's going to obviously do everything maximally as much as possible um the training stimulus for me is definitely the most uh i think it's the most encouraging environment to change your body just because it's so intense um it's forcing you to change. There's definitely, it's forcing because it's not how I train our choice because I wouldn't want yeah. to train on our choice because it's a little bit sick in the head. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I love to train hard, don't get me wrong, but sometimes you look at some of these training sessions and you're like, cool, that's a little bit overdrive, but obviously overdrive is what some people need. And so uh, how how are you managing your rest and recovery then? Do you, do you play it by ear? Like if you feel beat up, do you add in extra rest? Or is yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, Patrick's just like, look, listen, if you wake up and you're absolutely fucked, that day's a rest day as well. Um, yeah. Fortunately, I'm not very active, as you know. I kind of don't do much, so I do so get a lot of time to recover. So, what are you uh, managing? How many times a week are you managing to get away with it at the minute? Uh, I'll probably take a day off after two to three training days max. Yeah. So, yeah. I would never be able to do more than three training days like this in a row. And even then, that's a push because I would probably get a little bit of um, kind of like it'd catch up with me. Even if I if I did three days and on the fourth day I rested and I felt fine. My day, f- my day four of training probably would actually still be a bit shit. Mm. So it, it takes longer than a day to recover. Like one day often for me just to lay down and chill and eat yeah. doesn't always see me back into that recovery state. Um, so two two days for me, I feel like it's better than three. So you I can take, get away with just doing two days. You take two days off in a row though? Or you're saying you take two days on training and then you take a day off? Two, I'd rather do two days on training versus yeah. one day off. But yeah. don't get me wrong, I have done two days off in a row. And yeah. sometimes that's, that's definitely needed sometimes. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Um, because you're still handling, like, even though this training is more metabolic as such, you're still handling a lot of load. Yeah. Um, if anything, to be fair, like the numbers of actual total poundage lifted within a session exceeds that of which it would have when I did my straight training. Yeah. yeah. So I'm actually doing more work in total, which, yeah. which is why the recovery is so fucking uh, important. I tried to do like when I had him on, when I had Patrick on the podcast, Yeah. for those of you who don't, Patrick tour is uh, James's coach. When I had him on the podcast and he was talking about workout density. Yeah. And now you don't, you're not really including more volume or more time, but you're actually just including more work into, yeah. into the individual set using cluster sets and shit like that. I tried it for like a week and I obviously can't replicate what he's doing because I don't have his program, yeah, but yeah, I tried yeah. increasing the density of my workouts by adding cluster sets and different things. That fucking week was hard, but I feel like I made progress. Like I feel like my body changed that week. I, I do. I think, and, and I think the key to it is that you just you can't do that for. It's not something that you run forever. Like he's very, he monitors everything, and you might do that for three weeks, mm-hmm. and then you might scale back. Yeah, and then you do two weeks of something slightly, you know, a scaled back version, and then you go back for three weeks. Yeah. But all alongside the nutritional changes as well. Like he'll never just train it, change your training because mm-hmm. the train, the training stimulus alone isn't enough. So. You know, if, if he scales back training, he'll scale back nutrition to compensate and yeah. vice versa. Yeah. So obviously this, the last week or so, I've been back into the SST proper training. Yeah. My calories now exceed that of which they were before I went into the, the kind of deload. How so many now cal- I'm on the highest amount. Yeah, I'm on the highest amount of food I've ever been now with him. How many calories are you taking in right now? Do you know? Uh, mate, I, don't, I actually don't know because I don't count calories, but it's, it's you know, it's got to be the upper 6,000, I think. Of no food. way. Are you serious? I'm up to like three in the morning, like eating. It's, How it's, many it's, meals are you getting in? Eight. eight. Holy fuck. I, I like proper meals as well, not like little yeah, shakes. No, that's what I mean. It's not like. No, no, yeah, I know. Well, yeah. to get to get to 6,000, you got to be eating like, you know. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. saying he's not, he's not like having a shake in between meals to make it up. He's actually sitting on right. food, right? No, exactly that, Ben. And it's. Um, See, like that's I, a. I said, it's a chore. It's a fucking chore, but. You know, I'm at an age, like you would have said a few years ago, you're going to have like only certain opportunities to be able to clean this shit out like that. Because you can't do that when you're older. No. Not gonna, yeah. So I'm just doing it while I can. I hate well, you're, it, but... you're in your prime right now. I believe that the prime years for bodybuilding are anywhere from 28 to 35 in that, in that range there. 
yeah. the, your best gains, the most mature muscle I've ever put on. And most people that I've seen has been in that time frame. So if you're going to, but I don't know if I could handle someone like Patrick. And I think that's why, because when he was on, I considered working with him. I really like John, obviously John's, you know, a friend, a friend and mentor, but I felt like I needed somebody to crack the whip a little bit. And yeah. I thought somebody like Patrick would be, because sometimes, you know, when you get too friendly with a coach, sometimes the coach aspect dissolves and you become, yeah, yeah. so John would send me a diet. And I'd be like, ah, oh, can I change this? And can I change that? And John's real, really relaxed. So he'd be like, yeah, you can do this and do that. And I feel like sometimes you need somebody to just go, no, you're a fat fuck. This is what, this yeah. is what you're doing. It's whether those adjustments are literally calculated ones, isn't it? Like whether they're literally is macro for macro. Like mm. John's very relaxed to you because obviously he knows you very well. And maybe the changes he does encourage or you suggest fit and they do genuinely fit. No, no, no. I, I understand. You know? Like, I understand like changing, like, obviously if I say to him, I want to switch fish for yeah, fucking yeah. egg whites, yeah, that's an obvious switch. Right. But I, what I mean is, okay, let's, I'll give you an example. If I call, if I call John and I say, ah, I kind of fell off last night. I ate a pizza. John will say to me, it's okay. Let's just get back to work, get back on the diet today. And it goes away. So you don't feel any pain yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I shouldn't need to feel pain, but you know, like I said, I haven't competed since 2017. So you kind of fall out of that groove a little bit yeah, yeah. that I was in. So I felt like somebody like Patrick would be like, are you a fucking idiot? Like, what are you doing? Why are you eating a pizza? Right. You, so, that point where you need a little bit of an external kind of stimulus in that regard. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And the, I, the I think that's one, the internal one's a little bit tired. <laughs> that's right. It, it is. Yeah, like, <laughs> no, but like, cause I think about, um, you know, I, uh, and, and people might think I'm, I sound weird, but this is something I talked to Ian about, you know, Ian, I asked Ian why he left Matt Jansen and went to Patrick tour. And Ian told me, he said, I have no problem with Jansen or Matt's, uh, coaching style he's like but we came we became friends and he's like when you become friends you lose that like dynamic of I got to listen to my coach because yeah. now he because now he's your friend you know what I mean like it's oh it's true it's true so I think that's the thing with John but um but then the benefits are that he you know my brain gets all fucking fucked up when I'm dieting and John can keep me yeah very calm so yeah. anyway it's funny you say that because Ben you've probably had the same I had it with like Louis obviously one of my good friends um, and I coached him to win in the British title and then I quit coaching and I handed him over to, um, Justin Compton because again, the friendship yeah. can make, make things not the same as they were. So I get that. you must've had that Ben sometimes. Yeah. Really. I, I never ever made a comment to Luke unless he asked me direct. And like, if we were like, I, I mean, like traveling to shows, like Chris would come in and he'd look at him. And I'd heard, I, you know, I'd, I'd hear Chris say, oh, you look flat, or you look this, or you look that. Certain things that I would disagree with. He's like, oh, we need to do this. And I, I disagree with it in my head. Yeah. But I wouldn't ever tell Luke that, right? It never, yeah. I'm like, nope, I'm not saying a damn word. There was like two times Chris left the room and he said, what do you think? And I was like, honestly, I think this and this. Because yeah. he knew I'd give him my honest answer purely on what I was, I'd seen him enough times, in enough yeah. hotel rooms, I mean, so I could give a straight answer, but I would never try to give him coaching. Or, and he would never, it would just, we, you're too close. Yeah. You're too close and it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. I don't think it works. I don't you know. think it works. I think there needs to be, I think there needs to be a coach client dynamic yeah. for the, for the client to take it seriously. Yeah. Cause I think if it's your buddy, like I'll give you, I'll give you an ex a, a mental example as to why, and people, I don't you know, people are not, maybe not going to fully understand what I'm talking about, but when you, when I, when I seek a coach out, I, I put that person on a pedestal. Same. I'm like, this guy knows way more than the fucking I do. So I'm just going to do whatever he says. Yeah. So when I met John and I listened to John, I was like, holy shit, this guy's brilliant. I'm not going to, I want you to coach me. And I'll do anything you say. I still feel like he's smarter than I am and he's still got the same, you know, all the same protocols. I just, now that we've become friends, instead of him being here, it's more like we're here. Do you understand mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, totally. Because we know each other. So it's like, you know, the same thing when I work with Chad Nichols and when I work with Hani, I put them on this pedestal. So I was like, oh man, I got to do whatever they say because that's Chad or that's Hani or that's Chris Aceto. Mm. And it, but I was never friends with them. I think the friend dynamic changes that, 
yeah. that level I, that you're looking at, right? I had, that with, I had that with Milos. Milos started off as like being one of my idols. And I was like, God, I mean, I, like I was right after the British James Royal, we competed. Yeah, yeah. I worked with, started with him the next day and I've been waiting and itching to do it. And then quite quickly we developed a friendship and then we were like, when we travel, we'd go for dinner and, and I'm like, and he's still yeah. coach wise, coach wise way above me, but it's now just a different dynamic. That's and right. I, I can't like, I'll ask his advice on something here and there, but I won't, I can't have him coach me to just, you know what it's like? I know what, I know what it's like. So you go to dinner with him, right? And instead of ordering uh, steak and potato, you order the pasta dish and you fucking pig out. And because you're friends, he doesn't shit on you. He's just like, ah, yeah. oh, whatever. Like, you're just, you know, I'll, you know, we'll get back to work tomorrow. And because you're buddies, right? But when he's your coach and you're not friends, you don't do that shit because your coach is going to look at you and go, are you fucking retarded? Why am I wasting my time with you? Yeah. You know what I, I mean? always worked best with the coaches that made me feel quite intimidated. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, you, you're kind of looking to please them. You want to please them still. Yeah. Yeah. And in a, in a really like, that sounds really shitty, but I guess it's true. It's true, right? You're looking to, you want their approval. You want them to, like, I don't think, I don't look at it that way. I look at it like I want to make them proud. Well, they, yeah. So yeah. Same thing. Yeah. I yeah, guess. Same. Is that the same thing? Yeah. It's what I meant. You worded it better. Yeah. It's what I meant. Perspective. It's perspective. The same, it's the same result, but the perspective is slightly adjusted. That's all. Yeah. But you both feel the same. You want someone's opinion of you to be, you know. Good. Yeah. Good opinion. I, it's not their opinion I'm search, searching for. It's that person is investing their time in me. Yeah. I don't want to let them down. And it's weird to say, because I still feel that way about John, but because we're friends, it's just, it's a little different. I, and I, I don't know if I'm explaining it properly, but. I think you are, because I had a similar relationship with my old coach, you know, Steve Avery, um, Ben. Yeah. Like he was, like, I'd, I'd look at him and be like, shit, it's my crazy uncle who's going to kick the shit out of me if I do something wrong. Yeah. Like, yeah. I felt, and like, if I do it, if I'd go and see him and pose for him, I was scared. Like, <laughs> it, he'd have a stick, and he'd hit me with a stick and say, you're still fat here, still fat here. And like, make me feel awful. And, uh. But that was what made me good. It made me good because of the fear. Yeah. God, I'd, I'd still be terrified to pose in front of him. I know. But that's a, it's, it's such a good thing, though. It's, it keeps you on your fucking toes. You know, it's Maybe crazy, though. Got too fucking soft. What's that? Maybe bodybuilding's just got too fucking soft. No, yeah. I, well, I don't, think, I don't think John's actually any different than he was when I met him. I think, no, like but I mean, said, bodybuilding, like the expectation of coach relationships with fucking clients. Like, it's almost like, I'm not saying every coach and client, but there's a yeah. lot of pussy footing, isn't there? Well, because a lot of coaches now, a lot of coaches now are trying to create teams. We're a team and we're all friends and we're family and we go to dinner together. And we, I'm like, you know, when I work with Chad, when I work with Chad, I never spoke to him on the phone. He would send me every Saturday night. He would, I would send him my pictures in the morning and at three in the morning, he would send me a fucking email with my new diet. Yeah. And I never even spoke to him on the phone until I was like three days out. Business. Yeah. Yeah, it was just all fucking business. I wouldn't send him anything personal. I wouldn't be like, I broke up with my girlfriend. I wouldn't be, it would just be like, here's your fucking diet. Do the work. Send me your fucking photos. Yeah. And that's the way, that's the way a lot of it was. And now it's like, everybody has their coach's phone number and everybody wants to be friends with their coach. And it's like, it's very, very different than it was before. I think bikini fucked it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, so I have, all of my clients have my WhatsApp, right? My, yeah. my wife is fucking bananas about it. But they can all message me. And I have clients from Australia, <laughs> through Europe, through into America, right? So it's the time zone wise, it's easier if I have that. The best clients, or not the best clients, the clients that make the most progress don't really talk to me that much. Yeah. In a, in a almost in a non-logical way. Yeah. Like the more you think, the more communication you have with a client, the more you, you get, but it's not. The guys that just get in, check in once a week. They do the work. Yeah. They just get on with it, put their heads down. They're the guys that I'm going, fuck, we have, yeah, you're good. Do yeah. this. You're good. Do that. The guys that message me every single day tend to take longer to get there. Yeah, I think it's not necessarily wrong. I think some people just need more of a push than others. Some people, some people are self-driven and some people need that, that contact to know that their coach is watching, right? I need to know that Ben's watching so that I can make sure. It goes back to what we were saying before. They want to please you. So they need more contact with you to keep themselves motivated. So you know? should you be should you be a bodybuilder then? Um, well, I, no, like, and that's not me trying to just be an arsehole. No, no, that's I know. A, that's a serious question. Like, 
I'm trying to, I'm going to answer it. I think I just, yeah. I think it doesn't matter who you are mentally. If your coach is willing to work with you and you have the physique, I mean, look, just because you're a fucking baby doesn't mean you can't be one of the best, right? Like, look at, look at people who used to talk about Flex Wheeler and I don't know this personally, so I don't want to say it's true, but the rumor always was that Flex never trained hard and Charles Glass had to call and get him out of bed and Charles had to like count his reps and load his plates and, but Flex Wheeler is one of the best bodybuilders ever. So who's to say that he shouldn't have been, you know what I mean? So like, just because you need a little bit of a push mentally, that just could be who you are, but it doesn't mean you can't be a great bodybuilder. You can be great, but can you be the best? Well, arguably, he's the uncrowned Mr. Olympia, right? When everybody, when anybody talks about, when anybody talks about who's the greatest bodybuilder ever to not win, it's Flex Wheeler, right? No, but the key is there to not win. <laughs> so you're saying, <laughs> what, what, what did Ronnie have? Ronnie was did Ronnie the fact that Ronnie was not a baby? But you could argue that Ronnie Coleman had. And this is just for obviously devil's advocate's sake, but you could argue that Ronnie Coleman had Brian Dobson in his ear every day. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't think, I don't think Brian Dobson was babying him. <laughs> I'm not saying he was babying him, but what, well, all I'm saying is there's a stimulus, right? Some people need a stimulus every day, and that might be talking to their coach. I don't know. That fucking maniac used to go to work as a police officer out here every day. I'm not, I'm just and, obviously, I'm playing devil's advocate, right? Obviously, it, Ronnie was self driven, Dorian was self driven. But I'm saying there are great bodybuilders. And just because oh, you're, yeah. just, no, just no. just right. you're not Mr. Olympia doesn't mean you're not a great bodybuilder. No, right? no, so, of course. I'm just trying to be an us. I'm just well, we're having a – yeah, we have to have having a show, right? Trying to see but, what's the difference between number one and number two. Yeah, I wonder if that is the difference, right? You know? But I think the difference is more genetic. Because there's that, nothing – because. Not but wait a minute. Think about it. There is nothing Flex Wheeler could have done to beat Ronnie Coleman. Right? I, yeah, I, when I look at Ronnie, I think no one could have done shit. That's what I'm saying. So, like, imagine Flex Wheeler didn't have Charles Glass and he was self driven and he went to the gym every day and did his shit. Ronnie would still beat him. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. it wasn't like Flex Wheeler was like soft and shitty. He was, he was an amazing bodybuilder, but Ronnie was just genetically superior. Superior. There's nothing, I don't think that was a mental difference. I think it was a, you know, you were born with something that's insane. Do you think if Flex, if, if Flex turned up more, with the condition of Ronnie Coleman from the waist down on the back would have made any difference. If Flex Wheeler had the conditioning of 92 Flex Wheeler or 93 yeah. Flex Wheeler in 99, I think well, it would have been, I think it would have been closer, but I still think Ronnie would have beat him, man. It just, a, I can't, honestly, I know people are going to disagree, but the people that disagree are usually people that like pretty, pretty boy physiques. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True bodybuilders when they know how to truly judge a physique. I don't think anybody can argue that Ronnie Coleman was like the right. best of all time. Yeah. Even and I don't think, and I don't think anything Flex Wheeler could have done would have yeah. changed the way their bodies looked. Even Dexter, like I said, Dexter's got one of the most pleasing physiques of all time and the most consistent. And even he used to say, like, when he turned up and saw Ronnie at his best, it was like he was getting second. It was just that, you know. Hey, Jay said that. Yeah. Jay, Jay said that to me in my podcast. I asked, yeah. literally asked Jay. I said, "What was it like when you showed up and saw Ronnie in in two thousand three? And Jay was, Jay was like, I thought I was going to win. I had a lot of momentum. I won the Arnold's. And then, Ron, and, and then Ronnie took off his tracksuit, and I was like, oh, fuck. That's exactly like – that's what exactly – <laughs> What does what? it take to get the same changes as 2002 to 2003, Ronnie? Is, I think, it, is, I is think, it the drugs? No, I, well, I think Ronnie – he probably – in my opinion, this is just theory, completely, yeah. complete, complete theory, but – I bet you Ronnie was probably taking a certain amount of drugs up to 98. And then he met Chad Nichols and Chad Nichols yeah. was like, listen, this is what you got to do. And then he started to explode. Right. But yeah. also I, I don't know his competitive history off the top of my head in depth enough to answer this. Yeah. yeah. When, when did he stop doing a run of shows and only do the Olympias? You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't because, think that's it though. No, but you know what I mean though? Some guys like, once Phil, once Phil had won an Olympia, and then he could take the year off. He did get bigger. But what I want, but what I want to know is what what I want to know is what his food was like. That's what I want to know because I know Chad's off season diet, right? So Chad does a little bit of insulin in the off season. I don't know if he does this for everybody. For me, that was the first time I took insulin. Yeah. Um, and it was horrible, so I stopped taking it after I left Chad. But that was part of my protocol in the off season. But it was also a fuckload of food. 
Like I had never eaten that much. So mm-hmm. I would like to know what Ronnie's diet was like pre Chad Nichols and then, just, and then post Chad Nichols, because look at you, look at you, James, you're a perfect example. You're getting a lot of size. You were fucking massive last year, but now we're seeing a different physique yeah. and you're telling and, me reading. Like you say that, and literally I can be the only adjustments in things really is the nutrition because I've done all the drugs before. Well, your training's increased too, but yeah, exactly. I mean, the drugs has been the same. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it's, yeah. it's and then, mate, but again, that was advocate on my question. When was the last time you stepped on stage? And is this kind yeah. of since this is since your break where you went up Kilimanjaro? Is this the longest break you've had? Yeah, in an off season, you know. But I've had a three year off season and I haven't made any progress. So that's you've been mean. injured and beat up and not taking it seriously. It didn't count. <laughs> I was taking it seriously. Like 48. I took it seriously in 18 and 19. It was just the end of 19. Fuck me up. 18, 18, I was getting ready. Oh no, 18, I took off because I was a little bit burnt out. And then 19, I was getting ready for Toronto. And I, yeah. if I could put pictures up on the screen right now, I would. They're, I looked uh, probably the biggest I've ever looked and roundest I've ever looked. And then yeah. I tore my tricep. So Is that the one like, where you're like in front of the sauna? The pitch in front, is that that oh, one? those are those are probably my best photos. Yeah. But I was but I was bigger than that. And um, things looked rounder. And then I tore my tricep. I was like, fuck, you know? So, How does the tricep mentally uh, affect you, Ford? Oh, it sucks, dude. Like, honestly, James, like, I, I uh, dumbbell pressed 130-pound uh, dumbbells for the first time last week. Yeah. That's the heaviest I've gone since my tricep tear. Mm. And I was so happy. And that used to be, like, part of my warm-up. Not that I'm not, I'm not like you guys, you know, I never benched like oh, 200 no, no, pounds. No, but, still, yeah, yeah. but like 150s, 150s were a routine thing in my workout, right? Yeah. I can't smell those right now. I'm like, I got to, I still, I just got to 130s. And it, as far as the way it looks, my surgeon sucked really bad. Like it's, you remember when Branch Warren tore his tricep and then he would yeah. do a front double bicep and it looked like the tricep was pulled like halfway up the arm. Yeah. That's kind of what I got going on. So it's never, ever going to be the same. And that's why I tell people when they say, are you going to compete? I'm like, it depends what I look like. Because I'm not going to get ready and then like look at myself like four weeks out. And if things aren't like, you know, there's going to be some tears and bumps and bruises. But if things yeah. aren't look, they don't look right. I'm not going to embarrass myself. Right. That's how I find it incredible how Dorian did it with the bicep as well. And the tricep. I still find it mad how he stepped on the Olympia stage. Um, because like, that bicep I, was terrible. That was, it was like... But I don't think yeah. those things were ever any. I don't think anybody ever looked at his arms. They were. They were not the greatest anyway. But but yeah. even more so. Like it's not like he had one good arm to save a bad arm. You know well, what I mean? But what I'm saying, what I'm what I'm trying to say is, his I think strong his, attributes stood out more. Yeah, I think his sheer size and like yeah. his his back development and his, yeah. you know everything else and his the amount of con, like the conditioning he had, yeah. I think is what pulled him through. And if you want the truth, I don't think Dorian won in '97. I don't think he did. I don't think he did that year. No. I mean, what was the bicep tear? Was that 96 or 95? Yeah, yeah I think it was 96. But in, in 97, his, his stomach had blown out. and. I think Nasser won that Olympia. Yeah, he did, I think. I, I, always, I always wonder what it does to somebody when... Should have won. Yeah, like, what is it? Imagine, like, okay, I've, I've been to shows where I know I should have won. The guy, that yeah. beat, the guy that beat me has even come back to me and been like, yeah, you should have won. Yeah. And... Um, I can't, but I can't imagine what that's like at the Olympia. Yeah. I always think of Victor 07. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm like, wow. Like, cause I love Jay. I think Jay's great. I think it's fun. But Jay knows if you could, if you were to ask Jay about the 07, look, he'd clearly tell you it wasn't. I did ask Jay about it. Yeah. It wasn't up to par at all. And no, Victor, but he, th- but he thinks he won that show. Oh, well, I don't, I disagree. He didn't, he didn't, but it's okay. <laughs> I know he's best, <laughs> one of the best of all time, but he didn't win that show. I think Victor was, was impeccable. You know what the most uncomfortable thing was? He asked me what I thought while he was on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> was like, he's like, what do you think? Did I win? I'm like, fuck, am I supposed to be honest right now? Or am mm-hmm. I supposed to be diplomatic? Or how do I fucking deal with it? And I told him, I said, I don't know, man. I said, honestly, I thought I thought Victor looked great. And I kind of left it at that. And <laughs> I don't think he was too happy with it, but I'm like, fuck. What, you know? It was a very good Victor. It was a, it was the bad. I think it was the best Victor. And I wonder what happens to your mental mental state, because Victor was never the same after that. No. And you know Nasser was never the same after '97. He just no. his physique. Can, I think it it's gotta fuck with you because I know like 
okay, so I've taken a couple seconds that should have been firsts. Probably, yeah. I know of two in my career for sure that um, like a whole bunch of other people would agree with me. Yeah. So after that, you kind of like the Monday after the show, you get back to work and you're like, fuck it, I just got to get back to work. But that thought, I, I would feel it like six weeks later. Yeah. I'd be like, it would still be lingering. Yeah, that's so I can only imagine if it was the fucking Olympia. Like, how, would you, how do you ever come back from that knowing you should have won, you know? Especially against those two guys who were unbeatable at the time. And you know you just got, you know you got them, but you didn't. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's different taking second. Like, if you're Jay and you take second to Ronnie, it's different because it actually fuels your fire because you know he was better than you. Yeah. But if you're, but if you're better than the guy and you take second, then you're like, it's got to be just crushing yeah you know i mean and like dorian and yeah, dorian and jay at that time were the man they were they were the ones right yeah so, yeah. so in your head you know you took out the guy Ugh, yeah yeah um okay we should get to some questions guys there's like 240 little spoon or big spoon i can't imagine you at 290 pounds being spooned fuad or ben and i'm sure he, he would say the same thing about james if he knew you were on but James, 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 James could spoon us both right now. <laughs> little, no, no, not for eating. I think he means a little spoon or big spoon in the bed. <laughs> I thought he was just saying, do you like to use a little spoon or a big spoon? Well, I, I actually I actually use a little spoon for my cream, cream of wheat. Cream of rice, yes. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I always use a little one for that, but for main meals. Yeah. Um, little, oh God, you got, I don't even know how to fucking answer that. What do you mean? You don't know what spooning is? I'm, yeah, but what's the little spoon of what? Do I go in front or behind? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Look, how, look how confused he is. <laughs> I go little spoon. My wife always because I get so hot, I roll over and face the other way, and because yeah. I snore, because I snore, I'm like I want to be this way. So then I get an arm over my back. I'm gonna get flamed for my answer. You go first, James. I'm the same as Ben, but the thing is, I don't like being touched. So then I tell him to not touch me. <laughs> well, yeah, no, no, I, I do, I do that. I then like, I'll, I'll, I've got about ten seconds in me, and then I go like, nah, get off, nah, get off. Right. Dude, you know how much, you know how often I get shit on by my wife. You never let me touch you. You never cuddle. You never, and I'm like, do you know how fucking hard it is to be almost three hundred pounds? I'm I, fucking I'm, hot. I'm sweating, and yeah. plus, it's not only that. Like when I sleep, I roll around a lot. I roll this way, then I roll this way, and I'm back. I don't, I can't cuddle, but if I am spooning, even if it's for a short five minutes, I like to be the little spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm big spoon if I, I only big spoon if I want sex. Well, of yeah. course, you're not going to, what are you going to do? Take your, <laughs> you have to. You're going to back your shit up. Honey, <laughs> get the strap on. I want to be the little spoon. <laughs> Depends what kind of sex you're into, don't I suppose? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, you know, Luke actually said on the podcast once that he wished he liked that, but he'd never tried it. I know, I know. He said to me, he actually said to me, because somebody asked a question about it, about being pegged. And he said to me, I got friends that do that stuff and they love it. He goes, I wish I loved it. I just never got into it. And I'm like, why do you wish you loved that? Like, just who the fuck wants to get plowed by their fucking girlfriend? Yeah, I'm not into that. I've got a friend. I've got a friend that likes to fucking beat up his ass. Well, um, yeah. I don't mind a little tickle. A tickle is okay. Uh, he likes, he likes, I think he likes a little like, set of beans or something. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, okay, so Big Spoon, James? Yeah, yeah, no, Big Spoon, because, yeah. And then, Ben, you're Little Spoon. Little Spoon. I'm a Little Spoon, too. And that- if, we're, if we're watching a film, I'll lay on my back and she comes in here, right? Yeah. But if it's sleep time, I'm facing the other way. Yeah, like sometimes in the morning I'll get up and if I don't, if I want to cuddle for a minute because I haven't, you know, I don't cuddle at night when I'm sleeping. Yeah. I'll lay in front of her and let her fucking. Yeah. yeah. I'm the little, is that, is that, is that, is that like. We sound is that, pathetic. Is that not manly? I was going to say, that sounds like, sounds very feminine. <laughs> All right, you guys, I want to know how many men think like, feel like, and, don't be worried about being flamed because I'm 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 with you guys. Exactly. Little little spoon or big spoon? James, you're just you're the only one. Me and Ben are both all about the little James, spoon. James is just all man all the way through. James is all man. <laughs> I wish. I wish. Um, let's see here. We're not gonna do any roasts today, are we? 
I don't think so. People are getting a little annoyed with the roasts. How long should someone build a natural base before hopping on PEDs? Ben? You know, that, when I hear that kind of James? question, I, I don't know, because that question makes me yawn. Okay, right. let's move on. It, makes, it does. It makes me yawn because I'm like, I don't know how many times, how many times have we answered? I how many know. Times in your life have you answered that question? But there's more, you know, there's, you got to answer because there's new viewers. You know what I mean? So it's, it's important for newer people that are watching to be like, oh, I got to wait like a couple of years to build a base instead of just starting yeah. like on day one. This is why Fuad has a podcast and he's in charge because then he can put <laughs> order. I do say to everybody, maximize your training first. Like, learn how to train first. And I don't know, that might be six months, it might be five years. But if, you're, if you don't know how to move certain weights around and recruit muscle, you, I think a lot of guys jump on too early, put it that way. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm like, I don't really know an answer to it, but I do agree that most people jump on it way too early, not considering everything else that's involved. If yeah. you could pick a bodybuilder to go live with in the bodybuilding monk lifestyle to become a freak, who would it be? Uh, it, that, uh, that's going to be so boring of me, but it's going to be Dorian. It's not boring. It's a great answer. I never even thought yeah, of Yeah, but it's going to be uh, – it's, it's a great answer, but it's going to be a really boring life. My, my two would have been Dorian or Ronnie. If you're going to, if you want I'd love to go live with Ron. Ronnie's, I'm all about Ronnie. Not because I could lift like him, but he's like, the guy goes out to eat for his meals and shit. He's <laughs> dousing, his, dousing his food in barbecue sauce and shit. He's making shakes with like that's Nestle. Way, that's <laughs> way too over that is. He's making that's shakes. Way. Remember the shake he made with Nestle Quick? I was like, oh, this guy's fucking, the fucking yeah, genius. I have, like, have like five scoops of Sim for Six and Nestle Quick in one shake. Yeah. yeah. I, still, I still stand by this. Ronnie ruined more physiques in amateur bodybuilders than anyone else ever. Or doing what he can do because they all copied him. And they, you're not I, Ronnie. I, cop, I copied him. I bought the masterpiece barbecue. You know the masterpiece <laughs> barbecue sauce. I have it I because of Ronnie. Video. I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. But right. It's like, but I'm saying there are a bunch of amateurs. I guarantee in a prep they're like, "Well, Ronnie does it," and you're like, "Ah." Oh, but I also bet you there's a whole bunch of people that were like, "Wow, I actually got to train hard, and I have to eat like a fucking horse." So I bet you he helped an equal amount of people not be pussies. Yes. Right? True. Right, but Dor Dorian never taught anyone any bad habit. <laughs> Dorian never taught anyone anything. He made one video. He made no, one video. He made training, one video. <laughs> yeah, but that black and white training video is just like monumental. Listen, that's an amazing video, but it didn't literally didn't teach me anything. No, no one can. Food, but, you food, you know what? Food. Dorian caused more problems than anybody. He's like, just do one set. For, for like 20 years, people have been saying, well, Dorian did one set. Look at him. I'm like, are you fucking, you're not Dorian. You can't do one set. For four days a week in the gym. <laughs> yeah. Dorian did one set for exercise and right. four or four days a week. And guys are going there doing it. It looks like <laughs> shit. And they're like, well, Dorian did it. I'm like, that's way yeah, worse. And you got half the other cunts are putting barbecue sauce over everything. Yeah, but they got bigger. Even if they was fatter, they got bigger. Yeah, they got diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, diabetes. <laughs> How much okay. sugar's in that? I bet it's loaded. It's, it is. It's like four. It's like <laughs> it's like four, it's like fourteen grams in a teaspoon. Hey, you I, don't bet, need... I bet Coleman. I bet Coleman was getting like maybe a hundred grams of carbs from like that. Sauce. <laughs> yeah, you don't <laughs> need to get one hundred fifty grams of carbs from sauce. No, you don't need chicken and rice. You just need chicken and sauce. That's it. Exactly. Yeah, barbecue sauce. Sure. <laughs> uh, okay. Countries you've wanted to live in. Any countries you've wanted to live in? James, you've traveled quite a bit. Yeah, I, I tell you, I love Japan. Really? I would do a stint in Japan, definitely. Don't you feel like it's like, I, and this is just my ignorant self because I've never been there, but I feel like it's crowded, no? It is, it is, but they're so organized, you don't feel it. Like, they're, 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 um, their respect for each other's space makes yeah. even the most crowded of areas feel controlled. But as such a big guy, you really want to live in somewhere so yeah, doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't feel crowded? Not at all. Honestly, it was a pleasant place to be, though, I have to say. Like, it, I wouldn't live there forever, but I would do like I would definitely I could do a year there to just experience it. Is everything in is everything there small? Like like when I went to Paris, everything was small. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty small. But then again, they got the big Why are you fun. laughing, Ben? I'm not being I'm <laughs> not being like, I'm not being like racist. They make cups and then nice and forks. Is everything just miniature? <laughs> it's like this, but like half the size. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> It's um, the only thing that's small, really, is is like the like 
where you stay, like sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it is annoying, but you know, eating out and stuff, you can find places that aren't tiny. I couldn't it's sleep in one country. of those pods. I couldn't sleep in one of those pods. Oh, yeah. The boys, yeah. The boys probably like it there. there. Yeah, the boys that came with me, Ben, stayed in them. They're fucking absurd. I heard they like to party a lot there. Is that true? They do a lot of drinking, or is that Korea? I'm thinking of. I don't know. I didn't get to any parties, so I missed out. I think it might have been South. It might be South Korea. I'm thinking they're all the same. It's all the Honestly, same. Honestly, guys, like, <laughs> no, yeah, I, I would say, guys, I would say, if you get a chance to visit somewhere, <laughs> fuck you, Ben. You would say the, you'd say the same thing about Middle Eastern people. So fuck you. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> We're actually kind of representative of half the world right now. This is quite good. Yeah, we are. You're the white guy. Yeah. I'm the brown guy, and you're the Asian guy. Exactly. Yeah. We just need a. We need a. I see. I want to get Seth on the podcast, but he was do, He's got his own right now that he's recording. We would have had the. We would have had the American. But we have a white guy already. Well, who do we need? We need a black guy. We do. We do. We who need, would fit the? Who would fit the bill? The black guy, Sergio. Sergio's good on the podcast. Sergio is good. He's but not, he's not. Is he full black he's, though? He's Cuban. They're like uh, mulatto, right, or whatever it is. <laughs> We're gonna get so oh, fucking uh, fucked for I, this. <laughs> I didn't. I don't. If that's wrong for me to say, I don't mean it wrong. He's not. Like, is there uh, is there is there an African American that we could put on the show that would work? One of my favorite people I've spoke to on podcasts because he's what so about Samson. Brand, Brandon's chilled. What about Samson? Brandon Curry, so chilled. Like, I've done podcasts. Yeah, but you, it's too it's too chill. Like, no. I don't know how much fun he would be because he's like so like he's too chill. He's so right. relaxed. All right, I got one. Samson. Because him, him and James are having it out. We what do you mean? I don't, I don't know. I don't know Samson. I know his physique, but I don't know him. What are they having out? Oh, who's the better bodybuilder in Britain? Yeah, they're calling Samson's calling James out and said he'll never beat him again. So Luke is no longer with us, unfortunately. So now there's a power vacuum. There's because, a power vacuum. There's a power because vacuum. Because Luke, because Luke is carrying the mantle for so oh, long. For, so now there's you, Nathan, and Samson trying to take battle. And Sash is making a comeback. Who? It's oh, I think it's Samuel. Oh, is he? When's he competing again? He hasn't competed forever. Well, he's just had a baby, right? So yeah. I think he was taking time off to have the baby. But Sasson, isn't he like, I mean, look, he's got one of the most beautiful physiques I've ever seen. But if you put him next to James at 270 pounds on stage, is there going to be... Oh, he'd still smoke me. You think so? Yeah. Yes. Sasson is very good. He's very Sasson complete, the one New I know. York. Sasson should have won New York the year he did it. I feel like Sasan is like even uh, Sasan is a as a prettier Bonac. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what? I, th I I think Sasan or or a more complete Sean Ray. Ooh. Yeah. He, I he's, see the he's, he's very, very very beautiful physique, man. He's very underrated, I think. Yeah. And I, I know he's got some attention. I just don't think it. I think he credits more than he's than he's had. But you know why I think it's like that though? Because I think nowadays the the squeakiest wheel gets the fucking oil, right? Yeah. And I don't yeah. think Sasson's a very outspoken person or a very like he's a active. Nice guy. Yeah, but I don't mean even outspoken like an asshole. I mean like he's not he's not active on social media that much. I don't see a lot he, of videos. No, he hates. He doesn't they, like. I know he's involved with his family business. Yeah. Back home. Like yeah. I think he owns restaurants. Yeah. Um, and I just don't think the social media life appeals to him. Yeah, but, but think, think about what you're throwing. But think about what he's throwing away though. Like somebody needs to sit him down and go look. Sean Ray was probably the best small guy in the industry for a number of years until Dexter came along, whatever, right? Yeah. Now you have a guy that is better than him or equal to Dexter in, in stature or in physique. And you're like, ah, I don't care about the social media stuff. You can't. You're throwing away, you're throwing away a gold mine. If, if that's not what he wants, though, who's, who are you to say? I want to, because I'm jealous. I'm like, you should want it. You don't know what you have. Because you enjoy this part of it, right? I he, don't that's necessarily. No, that's not true. So listen, I'm, ta I'm talking to a guy I want to sign right now. I showed you him, and I don't want to say it online so no one else yeah. runs over and steals him. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm talking, about, I'm talking to this athlete right now. I just had a conversation I'm on the phone with him yesterday. And he says to me, I'm kind of like Dorian. I like to just go to the gym and do my work. And I'm like, that's great but you're no one's ever going to fucking know who you are. Yeah. That's not the world we live in anymore. So whether you, like I, I said to him, I said, look, I wish I could leave my phone in the car and stop doing YouTube videos and just fucking work out. That's all. That's why I started bodybuilding. I wanted to get paid to work out. I didn't want to get paid to like do mm -hmm. fucking videos. Mm -hmm. So, but if I want to get paid to work out, I have to do the videos. But this is what I'm saying. 
if Sasan isn't worried, if he has a business that's doing okay and he doesn't need the money and he just enjoys bodybuilding, he doesn't give a shit, right? But doesn't he enjoy being recognized for his work, for like, his effort? Yeah, but I think he gets like enough of that by just stepping on stage and, like you say, winning shows. Like, I guess if I didn't have to, like if I didn't need a contract and I had my own business was making good money, mm. I would probably I would probably still do this because it's so ingrained in me now. But maybe right. at the beginning I maybe not maybe I wouldn't have. I don't I mean, know. Look, look at Sasan's side chest. That thing Dude, is. Nuts. We should you know what we should bring him up for those people who don't know him. A hamstring he's got. I, that's that hamstring is nuts, right from the side. People are people are going to be like you guys are talking about this guy and no one's showing us what he looks like because not a lot of people know who he is because he doesn't do yeah. a lot of social media and it's one of one of. He works with a C. He works with a Cito. He has done for a long time now. Look at this physique. There's literally there's. That's 2015. Yeah, but you know what it reminds me of? It's like it reminds me of David Henry, but with legs. Yeah, yeah. Sure, remember, yeah. How, remember how great David Henry was, but yeah. his legs were always a lagging point. Look at this fucking physique. And that's him. Not, and to be fair, that's he hits the pose better than that on stage. Yeah. But it's this is phenomenal to me. There's nothing missing. Like oh, nothing at all. Look at what's his he, What do you think he goes on stage at? Like 220, 240? Uh, 230, 230, 230, yeah. Yeah. Did you say 240? 230, 235-ish, yeah. So, I would say it looks like 230 to me, but you never know, right? No, he is. He is around that. I know. Uh, we were, he did the Cali Pro when Luke did it. I look at, look at this. Look at this physique. It's phenomenal. Look at the quad. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Oh, you know what? He doesn't, as far as I'm aware, he doesn't squat ever. No, well, this, you can, but you can tell by his entire physique. This is, he's definitely genetically gifted. Like, I mean, obviously he works hard. Uh, 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 that's obvious. I'm not taking any away, but like the way the muscle ties in everywhere. Fucking beautiful. Oh, look, you're not going to see him doing an eight plate squat though, right? Look at that's this. Exactly look, at the, look at this one. Look that at this side hand. chest is a joke. Look at this hamstring. And he's got a nice tight waist. He pulls a vacuum. Like, really so is wrong. he's got a crazy, crazy physique. Look at, he's making Lee Priest's arms look small. <laughs> hey J james that picture in uh in golds yeah that's the same day that i posted you and i up there yeah yeah it is yeah i remember yeah yeah that, look at this fucking look that. at this back shot man both of them the spread and the Ooh. back to all bicep it's it's just crazy hamstring. yeah it's too bad you know I, I think people would love to see this more but you're right ben if you don't have a passion to put your face out there or do that kind of thing then you're just not going to get noticed nowadays that's how it works yeah if he came and did the British show, he'd shut everyone up. It'd be so funny. So you, so sorry, we got onto Sasson because we were talking about, is it Sasson or Sasson? Samson. We had Samson first. No, 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 no. no. Sass. Is, how, how does Sass? How do you pronounce Sass? Just Sass? Yeah, Sass. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, James now has a thing going with Samson and Nathan. No, Nathan, me and Nathan like don't have, I, 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 I know Nathan's great. Like I don't, I've never even. Are you saying about. Samson's not great? Oh, that was like a dig. You're like, I know Nathan's great, uh, and, and really that no, means Samson. I know, not. I know who's what tier. But I, I actually, I actually love Samson's uh, Samson's physique. If you want the truth, I, I like Nathan 2017. Uh, Nathan's physique, and this is you know, I don't want to get in, a, in an argument with Nathan or anything. This is just speaking objectively. I think he's got great body parts, but I don't like his flow. He's yeah. got a very long torso. And to me, it throws it off. And that's what do you not. Like about Samson? Let's hear what you like about Samson. Uh, Samson's got a very, he's got a pretty physique for a big, such a big, like, you know, he's not a small guy. Like, I don't know. He probably weighs in at 240, 250. Yeah. He's very, well, he's he was around 300, 310 in his off season. Like, this that, is that was, a, he's got to be, he's got to be at least 250 pounds. Yeah. That was uh, uh, my 2018. I was there. I got, I got sixth. He got fifth. I mean, very complete. Like, he's got nice legs, good arms, good back. Lovely shape. Yeah, good shape. He needs to be a little bit bigger, though, for his frame, though. That's the yeah. problem. Like, he's still not filling this frame out as much as he James, can. James has him on size and yeah. hardness. Yeah. Because when, when James comes in in condition, it's, it's – he has that. But do you see, like, this right here? You see the shoulder arm? I don't feel like this is big enough for his frame. I feel well, like he needs – That is two years ago. Yeah, he might have. Yeah, he might have caught up now. I mean, I, I don't. I know because when Luke and I had brutal muscle, we took Samson on and we're doing some videos with him. He'd never done a true off season. So this is him now at two ninety five. 
Yeah, he's yeah. grown. That's very impressive. Year. That's very, very impressive for 295, especially to be able to pull that vacuum like that. Oh, he's amazing. Listen, he's listen, he is amazing. And I just like giving him shit because he gives me so much shit. <laughs> Don't pull back from it, James. Fuck it. Take he, take your I'm spot. Not, I'm not taking away the fact that I'm beating him and he next goes against me. <laughs> you know Look what? I, my beard as well, for fuck's sake. I don't like. Uh, I, I'm not trying to create drama at all, but I love when two people. Um, I mean, as long as there's respect, right? I think it's great when two people push each other to be better and better. Oh, definitely. Like he's whether you whether you can admit it or not, you're looking at his pictures and you're like, I gotta beat him. Oh, definitely. And and, and he's another, and he's looking at your and he's looking at your pictures, thinking I gotta beat. I, I gotta be James. I look at his um, I look at his genetics, and I just think, fuck, like I've got a lot of work to do because I don't necessarily feel anywhere near as um, put together as that. But yeah. it makes me, it makes me hungrier. Yeah, but I, you, I, but you can probably, you may be able to beat him on other aspects, right? Like uh, yeah, he, he's gonna, he's gonna have shape, but you're gonna be the rugged fucking. Uh, that's why I said I think Samson might flow have a prettier physique, but James is a bit freakier, comes in harder and more like fucking hell, you know. Oh, don't look at me. My pictures are shit these days. I look awful. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck okay. off. Fuck off. You got, uh, everyone watching is sitting there going, James Holland said it's 300 pounds, looks like a freak. And then James, James oh, I look, look away, I look shit. James, how come this doesn't say The Shed? Um, I've given the you shed. the name <laughs> use The it, Shed. <laughs> you should use it because it's... I will, I will, I will. It's, I will. it's cooler just because <laughs> of how... It's cooler because of how big you are. Yeah. Yeah, I see will. what I'm saying? Like, this is... Yeah, and even shape. Like I, I shouldn't just say it's rugged. I mean, this is rugged, but your shape is really good. Like I've, I've got rounder with Patrick, definitely, because he's keeping yeah. me full. I think when my, my physique is quite round when it's full, but it just, it's just, it has to stay full, otherwise it just goes really flat. I, I've always said, I said this to James himself. James, up to like six weeks out, looks like he's gonna do a Dennis James, right? Yeah. yeah. And then from six weeks to the day of the show, something happens. And what are, what are we, what are we doing here? Why are you comparing yourself to Branch Warren? Because uh, because he's white. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta find, I gotta find the other rugged white guy. Perfect. <laughs> I'm super. I'm super interested to see if Patrick can put you on stage how you should look, and you know what I mean. Ben, when you're comparing yourself to other guys, do you look for the Asian guys? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just no. saying because I find people do that all the time. Like usually people okay, want to look. Done. I I, but there's, there, I don't like, I don't put my picture next to Rami's, and I'm like, I look like Rami. Like, I don't, I don't do that. I don't know why. I just never done that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a, you know what I mean? <laughs> I like that. Look at this. This is uh, crazy, dude. Got you got a lot. Them. You put on a lot of fucking muscle. What, when is like, that? Just oh, a few weeks back. Yeah. I just like with Patrick. Oh yeah, you with Patrick. Man. Good for yeah. you, man. Cheers, man. Appreciate that. Um, okay, let's go on. Next question. <clears throat> would you rather have shitty water splashed in your ass or get shit in your nails every time you take a dump it sounds like this, it sounds like this person doesn't have like a good good toilet experience it's like, it's like your own your own he's saying if you sit down and take a shit would you rather have shitty water splashed in your ass or get shit in your nails every time you take a dump <laughs> the water the, the splash the water yeah yeah the water 100 percent you gotta like I bite my nails and shit, man. I don't want like yeah, yeah, yeah. shit. <laughs> He's getting long. Okay. All right. All right. Um, oh, I didn't answer the country. I, I want to live in. You know what? I'd like to live in Texas. So we were talking country. about. We were talking about that earlier. I know. I mean, in the U.S. Yeah. I've I I I, I thought about if I could live anywhere. I kind of want to live in the U.S. Is that bad? James is like, very far. it just looks like, is it very far? Is it that different? <laughs> <laughs> I just I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm, not, expect, <laughs> I'm expecting you to be able to literally hop on a coach and be there. Well, I could literally drive across the border and be in Detroit, but okay. I don't want to, but I don't want to live in Detroit. I want to live in Texas or actually I like Northern California. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Ben, are What's you happy? With why do I have to, why do I have to live somewhere far away? Does that mean like I have no imagination? Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, it does. Does. Okay, so if, I, so if I said, so if I said, if I said Amsterdam, is that cooler? Definitely. That would, because like, then I can picture you there and imagine it. <laughs> like, it. You wouldn't look any different in America. All right. Uh, do you still think it's beneficial to do two a day training sessions for the first three weeks of reverse dieting due to the opportunity for growth? I don't think I ever said that, but 
we'll ask it as a question. Do you think it's beneficial to do two a day training I, sessions? I have, I'm, I'm, I'm not too, I'm not too familiar is the word with, with, with that kind of training. I spoke to it briefly of Patrick and there is benefits to it, but it's not something I can really comment on. Um, I imagine obviously if you're eating as, if you're, yeah, I would say it's better if you're eating more than a reverse diet. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're trying to control damage rather than anything. I think, um, I don't know how we, why did we lose Ben? I don't know, he disappeared. He's left us. I think, um, let me just re-invite him just in case. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what I think of that. I don't know really if I'm honest. I'll tell you, honestly, I think two things. I think uh, two-a-day training can be beneficial if your program is like 100% spot on. Yeah. And what I mean by that is you have your, your, your gear is intact, your, um, your supplements, your eating, everything is like bang on 100%. But even in that situation, I still think it's only good for like three or four weeks. Yeah. Because I, I remember talking to uh, Justin Compton and he was yeah. saying, and he was saying he did it. And, and Justin was saying that even him after like four weeks, he, his joints couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. And that says a lot. Cause Justin, like I'm, I'm quite good friends with Justin and he, he likes training literally every day on a prep. Like he didn't take days off. Dude. He so said he, if he says that, yeah, then that's telling me even he, he's a volume guy anyway. Mm -hmm. Do you think he'd be a bit more resilient? And I, th I think he said he was in, I don't know. I don't forgive me if I'm off, but I think I remember from our podcast, he said he was eating like 8,000 calories a day. I wouldn't be surprised. He's a, and, he was a big eater. Yeah. So he's eating 8,000 calories a day, which means his eating's on point. He knows how to train. And even him at four weeks said his like joints started to bother him chip. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the two a day training thing is only valuable for very short stints. Mm, I think yeah. so. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see. Stupidest thing you ever did in your in bodybuilding or life? It's such a broad question. I've done so much dumb shit. Uh, anybody else? Anybody want to answer that, or should I just keep looking? Pay for my girlfriend's rent for six months up front, and then get her name tattooed on me. Oh my god, that's a <laughs> horrible idea! What the fuck were you thinking? I was James. I was with you when I got my her name tattooed. Do you remember? That's I'm like there. that's one step below buying a girl implants. Ben, Ben, you know I did the same once. No, you didn't. <laughs> yeah. What'd you do? I got I got tattooed on me as well. My, when I, I was sixteen oh. years old. I've been married to my wife Steve, for. Hang on, sixteen. You're allowed to claim the dumb and young card. Exactly. How old? I were was twenty nine. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I got a cover up just to get rid of it. Ben, you're the kind of guy you fall in love real quick, don't you? Uh, no, but when I do, it's it's all in. I, I don't do anything by halves, so I'm either in or I'm out. So, like when you meet a girl, like a month later, you're like, "I love you. I want to get a tattoo of your name on my ass." <laughs> yeah, lucky I got a big ass. Holy fuck, dude! What were you thinking? That's the I've been with my wife for 13 years. I wouldn't get her name tattooed. Put on it my this ass. way. Put it this way, she got her name, she got mine tattooed on her about, so? about a year before. And I went, I, I instantly, I went, you're fucking nuts. I'll ne I'm never doing that, right? Yeah. Then we went through all this like weird shit and she kind of decided, because I was traveling so much, she kind of didn't trust me, et cetera. So yeah. we were in LA, I was with James. I think we were, in, we were eating on the beach. You know wait, that? wait. <laughs> Wait, so, you're, so wait a minute, wait a minute. So you're like, I got to get her to trust me. So I'm going to get her name tattooed on me, a body. Well, I figured it would be like a nice thing to be like, hey, listen, this is how serious I am about us. Because I told you, you remember that now. Fucking do it. I'd never fucking do it. It's the dumb thing to do. So my point was like, hey, I'm, I might be away from you, but I'm not like, I thought I was being. Oh, brilliant. look how, look how sweet that. I'm, I'm not, I'm away from you, but Fuck you're right you, here. Right? <laughs> I know I'm, I'm away. I know I'm away from you, honey. But I have your tattoo right here on my arm. Yeah. What were you That's thinking? I, I was thinking with my dick. That's what I was thinking. Send her a fucking send her a picture of yourself jerking off or something. What are you getting a fucking Jesus Christ? Yeah. So that's my dumb shit. Easy mistake. James didn't talk me out of it, so I blame him in part. Yeah, that's something I never did. I never thought of that. I, it's something I always knew. You know, that's honestly, like I said, it's one step below buying a girl implants. You know, when guys go get buy a chick their tits and then the girl leaves like six months later. You gotta feel you gotta feel like an idiot at that point. Oh man, poor fuckers. Poor fuckers. Yeah. 
I can't think of the dumbest thing I ever did. I don't know. Probably something stupid. I just can't think of it right now. Put on the spot. Too many things. What type of food disgusts you and you can't eat? Mine is a pear. Why would a pear just... Pears are delicious. Pear phobia. (laughs) Pear phobia. What foods disgust you, Ben? Pickles. Pickles are delicious. What are you talking about? No way. (laughs) No, like, honestly, it was so bad. Like Luke, when he was dieting, we'd go to Costco and we'd come out and he'd be like, oh, dude, because I'd always drive. He'd be like, dude, can I, can I, do you mind if I eat pickles in the car? I'm like, fuck off, no, eat them in the car park before we leave. Eat them what out. do you mean pickles in the, he just wants to eat pickles by themselves? He, he opened the jar and he'd eat, just eat pickles out of the jar. I'm like, you're <laughs> fucking pregnant, like a pregnant woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Denise is doing it now. He got, Denise got the jar out of the fridge the other day and drank the fucking pickles. No. How fat, how fat was her face the next day? It's like water retention, fucking. Yeah, so water face. What about, what about you, James? What's the most disgusting food? I, I can't stand octopus. Yeah, I don't think that's so, that's so specific, but you're right. No, I don't, like, I don't like the suckers, man. I don't like the suckers. Yeah. But you can eat the, can you eat the calamari? Like the fucking. I can eat calamari in a yeah. ring. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just, when you deliver a fucking, if you serve an octopus upside down with his head in a fucking bowl and it's, ass upwards yeah in his, beak, in his beak pointing at me yeah yeah there's a real issue there i can't fucking do that I'm and they come out crispy as well or they either well, actually they either come out crispy or not even fucking dead yeah, yeah. i can't do that either you know what i mean i'm not too keen um, you deep fry anything and i'll probably eat it though really like, like what about what about like well you're but you're chinese that's why deep fry pickle and i'm i might be able to stomach it yeah but chinese people don't they eat like uh like deep fried insects and shit like grasshoppers Deep fried bats, cow's tongue, uh, intestines. No, I'm being serious though. Don't they? I'm not trying. Yeah, no. My dad. My dad apparently went to a restaurant over in China. He said they served the turtle that was still alive in a. (laughs) And he was like, my dad would try most things, and he apparently he said, I'm, I'm out. I don't want. I don't want to touch that. Can you eat any of that shit, Ben? Did you eat any of that shit growing up or no? How how Chinese are you? How Chinese are you? I've never been. I don't know. I've never ever ever been to China. Well, no, I'm only saying that because. People are like, "Oh, you're Lebanese." I'm like, "Yeah, but like, I'm yeah, not." No, I I grew up eating. I was mom's boss. I was born in. I mean, I grew up eating my mom's food, which is Arabic food. But right, you know, I'm not like hardcore. You know, no, I wasn't hardcore. We'd eat some Chinese foods, but the the normal ones, you know. Yeah, yeah, nothing crazy. I'm kind of with. I think I'm with James on that. There's a lot of seafoods I can't eat, or like I see people with like some delicacies, like cow's tongue, and like, mm-hmm. like. You know, Indian people eat cow's tongue and like shit like that. I can't or chicken really? heart. I don't. I don't think. I don't think they eat cow at all. Oh, it might be Pakistani people. I remember going to a friend's house. Who, I <laughs> don't say. Don't say it's all the same. You're gonna get. I just trouble. made a fucking little error, right? No fucking. Every, everybody needs to calm the fuck down a bit. If somebody <laughs> said to me, "I looked Iraqi," I wouldn't get fucking pissed off. I'm. You know, it's like this. They're all pretty close. Like. Well, yeah, my friend came over the other day and she's a, a Iranian and I confused her for Iraqi. Look, so I don't think it's wrong. Okay, tell me if you guys think this is wrong. If you see a Korean guy walking and you say he's Chinese, I know it's insulting, but how wrong is it? Less wrong than saying he's Jamaican. Is it, is it wrong though? Like you're just, I don't know. Like no, I mean like factually wrong. Let me, fact- no, no, you're factually wrong. Yeah, but is it like insulting? Because honestly, it's insulting. yeah. I, listen, I've been called fucking like Scottish and all sorts. Yeah, like if you call James, okay, James is English. If you called him Scottish, I don't think you'd yeah, be okay, pissed but, off. Well, Scottish people and English people and Irish people don't char- don't have different characteristics, physically speaking. To you know, true. Okay, if whereas you, uh, I'm telling you now, Koreans versus Chinese versus Japanese very have different different characteristics. Okay, but and wait a minute. Just, 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 just let me. I'm not trying to be a dick. Just let me. I'm trying to ask for all the people out there that probably think this and just don't want to ask. So I'm being the dick here, but I'm just trying to get this into an open conversation because I'm trying to help out race relations. So, <laughs> so that's okay. Let's use my shit for as an example. So. If I'm walking down the street and someone goes, that guy's Saudi Arabian, I don't get offended in the least, like not even like 1%. I'm bad for it because I always say people are Indian and they're normally not. Yeah, but 
listen, well, it's when, because it's just because I it's just. Okay. Let me put it this way: where, where your parents are from Lebanon, right? I'm Lebanese, yes. Well, okay, background cool. background is Lebanese, but born okay. in Canada. I would imagine, and obviously neither of us can answer this. If you were born and raised and still lived in Lebanon, if yeah. someone if someone thought you were from Saudi Arabia, you might be offended. Then. That sounds crazy. Well, <sighs> you know what I mean. You're removed. You've lived. You've grown up in Canada. You're Canadian. But what I'm saying is, like, for you're down. let's say let's say the average white guy or black guy or whatever from america points at an asian guy and goes that guy's japanese when really he's chinese is it is it his fault that he doesn't know all the specific differences between all like you know what i mean like i don't expect the average canadian but wait a second i don't expect the average canadian to know the difference between the way an iraqi looks a lebanese guy looks a syrian looks a Palestinian guy looks like it's crazy to expect them to know that. No, I, I, I do. I understand what you're saying. And I think in that case, don't try and be specific then be broad with it. So well, I usually do. I usually say that guy's Asian. Asian. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're, like, you know what I mean? I think there's, if you're, if you're ignorant to it, well, that that's your fault because you're ignorant. So learn mm. or don't bother saying it, say something which you know, isn't divisive. So if you yeah. say, if you see a Brown guy, you should say he's middle Eastern. I mean, yeah, I guess so. Or, or it could be are, Asian because if he's in it from India, he's Asian. Right, but don't. I, I would probably not be specific, especially if. You well, what are you supposed? But this is so crazy to me. Like, what are you supposed to fucking call somebody then? What are you supposed name? to? No, I'm not. I'm saying if you're trying to describe somebody, let's say you're trying to describe. Let's say you saw an Indian guy. Right. What you what you thought was an Indian guy? Maybe he's Pakistani. They both have similar features. Right? I would say Asian. But what if? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I got a lot of, see, I got a lot of Sri Lankan. But Asian, but Asian could be, but Asian could be, you know, could be Chinese. Where's, so, where's Sri Lanka? I don't know. James, you got, ben, ben are you gone again? Oh, I'm back. He keeps kind of arms. Okay, yeah. don't worry. I, I'm at, I need to know from Ben because he's Chinese or part Chinese. I need to know if I call an Indian, if I'm trying to describe an Indian guy and I say Asian, but that also describes a Chinese guy. So I'm not really describing what I'm talking about. Brown Asian. Oh, you have to say brown Asian. Maybe you do. I don't know. Is this crazy? Oh, is it crazy know. though? Is it, isn't it crazy? I don't know because we live in a crazy world right now. I'm scared. I don't know. Everybody's scared to say shit, but I don't think anybody's, but don't you think intent matters? Like I'm not trying to be rude. If I say, that guy's Japanese and I was wrong and he happened to be fucking Korean or he happened to be Yeah, I do think we don't don't um often include the intent factor. Like if you don't mean something bad by it, I know there's always gonna be argument, but I personally don't take offense to anyone who doesn't have bad intent. That's what I'm trying to say. Like I don't think it's wrong for someone to say, okay, you called by the guy by the wrong country, but you weren't trying to be demeaning in any way. Mm. Ben, yeah. are you, ben, are you gone completely? I think ben, he ducked out on this conversation. <laughs> no, no, he's Ben's been having trouble with his fucking internet. So he's like, "Fuck, well, fuck all the race talk. We get out of this." Yeah, maybe we should move on. I, I just, I guess the whole the whole point I'm trying to make is I think people are overly fucking sensitive when yeah, no, uh, when a lot of people when a lot of people just don't know and they're not trying to be hurtful. The world's a big place, and there's a lot of nationalities. It's hard to know. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's you're just trying to describe an area. God or God. or or a country and maybe you were off but it doesn't mean you're yeah. purposely trying to be hurtful because you're off no definitely. that's why if somebody says like if somebody can't pronounce my name or if somebody says i'm iraqi and i'm not iraqi i don't get offended because i know they don't mean it to hurt my feelings I, I, like if you didn't say you were lebanese i wouldn't have a clue that's what i'm trying to say if someone said where's fraud from i'd probably be like uh canada <laughs> oh no i'd probably pick someone in the middle east but i don't i'd be the wrong one like you said, you would just you would just guess. You would spit one out there and just be like, "Hope it lands." That's right. I got to reinvite. Without that. bad intent, like you say. But that's exactly my point. Is I think yeah. people need to start determining, like whose whose intent is what. Or is that person trying to hurt your feelings, or is he just exactly. is he just not aware of all the different exactly. nationalities? I've been, I've been confused with Australian before because English people do sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. I, I know Luke used to say that all the time. Yeah. Um, okay, let's move on. I don't, people are probably angry at this point. <laughs> so, um, let's see. 
how do you deal with more anxiety with more progress you make with your physique, even though it sounds like a paradox for some? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think what he's saying is like, the bigger you get, maybe the more gear you have to take or the more pressure you have because of the spotlight or whatever, it probably causes more anxiety. So that's actually a good one for you, James. I know we've discussed anxiety and stuff before. For me, it feels like the question's one of those, you know, like the higher you climb, the hard, the, hard, the higher, you know, the further you can fall. Yeah, you know but, I mean? but um, it's... In the sense that, obviously, the pro progress you make, there's always this fear and anxiety of lo loss. So let me, let me just reread. That's what I'm getting from it. Yeah, let me just reread the question for Ben. So this guy says, basically, I think what he's saying, I'll read it exactly, and then we can try and yeah. decipher it. He says, how do you deal with more anxiety with the more progress you make with your physique, even though it sounds like a paradox for some. So what I'm taking it as for me personally is I had anxiety anyway. So on a physical side, the gear caused more anxiety, but on the, uh, I guess, professional side, the higher I climbed in my career, the more pressure and anxiety came with the success. Yeah. So I, yeah. I think he's saying, how do you deal with both of those things? So they maybe, rise together, don't they? Yeah. So James, we'll start with you, I guess. How how do you think someone can deal with that if they have anxiety already and they're getting more anxiety, but they can't they love their career and they want to keep going. So how do they do this thing? Oh, that's right. a really tough question because like only last night, I no I kid you not, only last night I sat there very still, very late at night, thinking about Luke. Yeah, last night. It was one of them nights where I just had him on my mind. Um as Ben has had many a night, and I'm sure you have. And I was almost like time paused around me. It must have been like one in the morning, and I still had another meal to go, and I was fed up with eating and fed up with what we're doing. And I suppose that, that I, I was having what my bouts of anxiety would be, thinking about the whole path, the choice. Yeah. Um, and the only thing that really helps me is just like taking that moment, sitting there and breathing, and analyzing everything that you've done and seeing where you are now. And like just taking the time out, like just to tell yourself it's okay to sit up and be awake and think. Because thinking is how you deal with things. Thinking is how you break down things, how you decipher how you feel. Like I don't know if that answers the question at all, but I just have to sit there and think in order to decipher things. And and that's my way. Like I honestly have to had I have to tackle it head on. If something's bothering me and it may causing me to be anxious, I have a habit of going right towards it and then trying to find the source and then just yeah. sitting there. And thinking about it and trying to break it down because I don't know why last night I had that come about me. I was always, I was quite. Um, I had an I had an evening of feeling lonely. Yeah. And I and I, and I and I wondered how our friend felt, you know. And that's I just had one of them evenings. And a lot of it is to do with bodybuilding itself because it's very um, insular. Let me give you a more direct example and then see if you can. Yeah. I'm because I'm trying to decipher his question. So yeah. as I got better as a pro and i'm sure you've dealt with this too i had more more appearances to go to more uh booths to be at more expos to go to all these things right yeah. and my anxiety came from meeting new people or being in social situations i wasn't comfortable with but now i have all these appearances to go to because i've reached a level of popularity where people are are demanding my presence in certain places yeah how do you deal with wanting to be successful and still having to go to these fucking things that you're like, you know, are going to cause you anxiety. I mean, that's a more, that's a more direct. Yeah. I just feel like right. you've got two choices, haven't you? You've got the, the run away or hide and all the go towards. And, and I always choose to go towards, even if it's going to make me feel that way. I, I, most things that I do that have involved bodybuilding and meeting people. I don't feel like doing, I could quite easily put out last minute and say no more. Yeah. But, I don't know. I just know the alternative isn't as good. Yeah. I, that's all I can say to it. I just know that the alternative is a waste of all the energy put into this point and all the effort and all the thought. What do you think, um, Ben? Do you have any, you have anxiety about becoming more successful, getting more clients, being a more notarized, being um, more, being a better coach? Yeah. I think, I think I'm aware of the cost, you know, the cost of success, or however you want to define it. Right. Um, everything costs so any level of success costs you the time and the effort first to get there but then there's a then there's a key by like anyone who's super famous right so brad pitt any of those high they now the cost is for them normal life doesn't exist for them right? yeah 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 
but that's what they paid to become successful in their chosen career. And I think don't be naive to that. Don't think you can, you can't have your cake and eat it, right? You've got to. But let me stop you for a minute. Do you, do you have, do you actually deal with anxiety yourself or no? Yeah. So, but about mine came, I've learned to deal with it because I had, I had PTSD, right? Yeah. And, and so I actually went through therapy after my accident and I had, went through dealing with anxiety. Um, and I think what an important point is if you look at any top sports women or athletes, they're getting more and more into the using a psychiatrist or, a, or someone to help them mentally. Sports coach, coach sports coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's obviously that's a luxury that like, you know, like I know Novak Djokovic, the tennis player, he uses a, psych, a psychologist a lot and the, there's certain fighters that go and see psychologists to deal with those pressures. But for them, it's, it's accessible because of the level of success they're at and the financial um the finances they have available but for everyone else i think talking to somebody or having a support network around you that understands i i I don't deal with my own anxiety directly i deal with it with my wife right yeah and i have to sometimes i just talk at her and i'm Mm. rambling and i need her just to listen and hear me out because if i think if you just try and contain it all i don't think you're going to handle it very well if you try and deal with it yourself. And I think that's where a lot of, like, a lot of people, especially men, make the mistake. Yeah. So there's two things, two things I got that are very important to me in anxiety that you both mentioned is, number one, I think James said is, you can't steer away from any of your anxiety. So like, even if it's not about your career or becoming better or becoming more successful, you have to take the challenge head on you have to, you have to actually take the anxiety head on. One of the best books I ever read for anxiety was feel the fear and do it anyway. And basically, basically it's saying exactly what James said, which is there's the fear is going to be there, but the more you avoid the fear, the stronger that fear becomes. Yeah. Your anxiety may be this big. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. This is how crazy I was. I couldn't stand in line. That's how bad I was at one point, my early twenties. I couldn't stand in line at the grocery store. I get to the grocery store line. And there would be like three people in front of me. And as soon as somebody lined up behind me, I would get anxious. I'd be like, mm. I, can't, I can't be around these people. I actually would go around the grocery store and come back. And be, yeah. I, I had to, yeah, I had to be at the back of the line. It was fucked. And it got to a point where I kept doing this and I noticed I was getting worse. I couldn't go to the bank. I couldn't stand in line at the bank. I couldn't, I couldn't sit in like a, a doctor's office waiting room. I couldn't sit there with people like just sit. I felt like everybody was staring at me. It just felt really uncomfortable. Right. Mm-hmm. So I got to a point where I started forcing it. And that's the only time I started to get better was I'd have to force myself to sit there and, and try and challenge it. And that's when it started to get better. And that's what, that's what James mentioned. And the second part was what you mentioned was I started telling people about it. Yeah. Like I would be at dinner and I'd be having an anxiety attack and I would look at whoever was with me and I'd be like, I'm not feeling well, man. You want to step outside with me for five minutes? And that person would go outside with me for five minutes. I'd cool off or whatever, regather myself, and we'd go back in and finish dinner. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a, I, I'm not going to try and quote it, but there's a thing that says like being brave isn't being fearless. Yeah. Being, yeah. being brave is having fears yeah. and being able to acknowledge them and face them and overcome them. Yeah. Well, that's the definition of courage, right? Is, Right. Fear, fearing something and going towards it anyway. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, and I think, I think in ter- particularly with men in our sport, I think there's a lot of hiding or ignoring it. Well, because of our stature, right? Like all the things I just said, nobody's supposed to say. Yeah. Because someone's going to go, you were scared to stand in line at the grocery store? And I'm like, yeah. And so you're not supposed to say that because we weigh – you know, 250 pounds of muscle. We're supposed to be like these fucking tough guys that have no problems. And it's just not, it's not true. We're fucking normal just like everybody else. Yeah. So, and in fact, in fact, it's worse for us because if you do have anxiety and you are taking anabolics or any type of PEDs, you're accelerating or amplifying whatever anxiety you have. I wish people acknowledge that more. That's the part I get 
tired of not people not understanding is that anabolics do have that effect and people try to say they're fine. What do you mean? Um, that, that people shrug off when, when they're like, oh, I don't feel any different on cycle, I'm fine. Like a lot of people yeah. do that. A lot of people are in powerful positions who could help educate, but don't choose to admit that mm-hmm. because they're protecting this image. Whereas so I've always, yeah, and I've always felt the need to be very honest and say that I'm different and that you should be aware of that because if it's something you are considering doing, you need to understand that there are certain changes that occur. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I said the same thing. Yeah. I said the same thing. Like I had probably three or four years where I was convinced that I could handle it. I was like, oh, it's fine. It doesn't, doesn't affect me. Then last year I had a long stint where I was really, really low dose. And I was like, oh my God, I'm such a nice, I'm a better person. Yeah. My brain operates, my brain operates better. I can think clearly. I, I'm reasonable. My anxiety is not as high. I'm more peaceful. It's just, but I tell I people, I, got, I was asked some, somebody asked me a question about that. And I said to them, the only time I like PDs is for the one hour I'm in the gym. Yeah. There's literally, there's literally no other time I'm happy that I'm on. I don't like doing shots. I don't like, I, I, like I miss my shots sometimes because I, I can't, I'm like, I don't want to do it. Right. So literally it's the one hour in the gym where you want to feel that aggression. You want to feel that energy. You want to feel that edginess. That's the only fucking time I like it. Yeah. I like, I like myself better when I'm off the other 23 hours of the day. I sleep better. I'm my appetite is normal. I'm nicer to my wife, the whole fucking thing. Right. Absolutely. And my, and my anxiety, my anxiety is like, if it's here normally, or if it's here, like on anabolics, it's like fucking here. Yeah. when i'm off yep. so anyway probably went too far on that one but um how long do you guys have a little bit longer if you need well longer. i don't i don't need we can cut it now are you are you bored jay <laughs> uh okay let's see what is your biggest motivation anybody what yours? what's yours for that's a tough one. What set, I guess that we should answer like what sense of motivation. The biggest motivation for me is success. If we're just talking in a broad spectrum, right? Yeah, like yeah. if we're not talking about like a single, like what person motivates you or what thing motivates, like my biggest motivation is just, I don't want to be a fucking failure. That's it. I don't want people to look at me and go, yeah, yeah. He was a bodybuilder. Now look at his life. It sucks. Mm. Like, I don't, I don't, you know, there's a lot of bodybuilders that, you know, the one thing I said to myself when I started bodybuilding is, and I hope to God, this doesn't offend anybody. And if it does, I apologize, but everybody has their own definition of success. Mm -hmm. I said to myself, if I do the professional bodybuilding thing and I get to the top of the bodybuilding world or close to it or whatever, and then after all is said and done, after all the stage and all the accolades and all the fucking signing autographs and whatever, after all that's gone, if I just end up being a personal trainer in my local gym, that I have failed. Yeah, that's your own expectation. That's fine. That's my expectation. I, I yeah. thought I'm like, if I reach this level in the bodybuilding world, I need to stay at this level in whatever career I choose. Well, yeah. tre- whatever yeah. career I choose afterwards. So my motivation is, I reached a certain place in bodybuilding. Yeah. That's where I need to stay in whatever other thing I go into, whether it be the supplement company or whatever. I feel the same as that. Yeah. I feel very much the same as that. In what sense? Like, you mean, like, as far as, like, you've reached the level in bodybuilding just, and you can't go back? People, yeah, I feel that, you, yeah, it's, uh, life is about going forward. And I feel that I would be very pissed at myself if I didn't allow my achievements in this to be carried over into other things. Yeah, like, imagine, imagine, like, what we're saying. So, as a bodybuilder, I could say I was top 15 in the world at one point in my life. Yeah. If... Imagine being top 15 in any other thing in life. You know, if you had like a top 15 restaurant, if you had yeah. a top, if you had a top 15 hair salon, if you, if you were the top 15 coach, Ben, like yep. whatever, whatever stature, I think that's kind of where top, top, top 15 supplement line. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Right. So that's like, so my motivation is that my motivation is I would, I want to keep my life my consistency of my stature of living, my, my expect, my expectations of myself. That's what, yeah. you know what I mean? So. No, I think that's really cool. Man, you got, what, very... 
But yours is very what? My, mine's very different. <laughs> okay. Um, I spent most of my life thinking I wanted to be successful, wanted to earn money, wanted to, you know, be known, et cetera. And then when I had my, I was speaking to my wife about this last night, when I had my motorbike accident. So I don't, stop me if I, it's, it might be boring and get too deep. I don't want to start ra rambling down a rabbit hole. But oh, Go ahead, man. Um, so when I had my accident, I didn't pass out at any point, right? I was awake for the whole thing. And you know, they say that thing where your life flashes before your eyes, right? Yeah. Well, that didn't happen to me. I don't know what the fuck that looks like, but all I do know is that I went over the car and I was going through the air and in my head, I, I can still remember the exact thought process. I thought in my head, I could see like the sky and I figured whatever happens next is the end, right? I thought I was going to hit a lamppost or the road or a concrete block or another car and it was all going to go black. Yeah. And instead of panicking or getting freaked out by that, you, oh, I did anyway. I got incredibly calm and was at peace with it, right? And I don't know, but th that seemed to change my perspective on life and what I wanted out of life. And I don't... I don't stress on the things I can't control now. Like, like, like the accident, I was going through the air. I couldn't control what I hit next. I couldn't control where I was going to land. So I didn't bother stressing over it. Um, again, I don't want to go off too. But I think, but I think you might be misconstruing the question. So, no, 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 no. So, so my the thing that motivates me now. Yeah. It used to be like we had a conversation yesterday about cars, right? And yeah, yeah. What motivates me now is I think more like freedom and happiness. And whatever that, however I get to that point to be able to raise a family and yeah, okay, there is some element of financial um, necessity to that, like being financially free to be able to go and do things with my family and things like that. But it's a slightly different from what I've heard you two talking about. It's a, it's a slightly different um, perception of motivational success. What Can I mean is success. Can I express why I think that is? Sure. I, I live my life for myself and my wife. Yeah. I don't, I don't have any kids. So if you ask me what my motivation is right now, my success, my motivation right now is success for me and my wife. I want to have, mm -hmm. and I think freedom, you're right when you say freedom, but freedom to me is money. And I know people say money doesn't buy happiness, but money buys fucking freedom. So I feel like, but I think the main difference, like if you ask me in five years, Ben, what my motivation is, and I, if I have adopted a child by then, my motivation, my answer could be 100% different. And mm -hmm. I think maybe it's your motorcycle accident. Maybe it's because you have a child on the way, but your motivation is probably different than ours because, or at least I shouldn't speak for Ben or for James, your motivation is different than mine because my motivation is very selfish at this point. Yeah. Because I'm not trying to provide for anybody else. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's where the differences are our answers possibly. I don't know, before, before you had a child on the way. No, what, I was just saying, since, since my accident, I've been different. So it's, from from your, so it's not from your child, it's from your accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But what's your, uh, I think when, you wake, when you wake I, up in the morning, what's your motivation to be, to be great? What's your motivation? I don't want to be, I see this, I, I don't, it sounds weird. I don't want to be great. I just, what do you want then? Yeah. I just want to be happy. Um, I think, well, when I say great, wait, but when I say great, I don't mean like to other people. I, I mean think, like... I think there's an overlap. I think there's an overlap. And some of the things that I'm doing that make me happy are some of the things that you would do to become successful. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think there's an overlap. It's just how I perceive it. But doesn't your happiness come from, like, let's say you have a client and that client turns pro. Yeah. That, that to me is success but that success also brings me happiness because it's something I created or I helped, I helped create. Do you know what I mean? I like, like, yeah, I, I see you. I, I understand. I think there is a overlap. I think there is some of that, but what do you think, James? You're not saying anything. Um, I'm, I, I understand the selfish nature part cause I'm probably the most selfish person on the planet. My, my, my life is all about me. But what's your motivation? Yeah. What's it, when you wake up in the morning, what's your number one motivation? Um, 
see it to the end. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. see it to the end and see it properly done. So like, you like you have a vision in your head, and that's your motivation. I, I have a. It's more like what I don't want. I don't want to be cut short. Like I'm, I understand the frailties of life, and I understand that it can be gone at any moment. So my motivation is, as long as my eyes open in the morning, is to make sure that I feel every feeling I can feel, smell every fucking smell I can smell, and enjoy every fucking company I can enjoy. Um, obviously, that's just the broad thing. But I, I'm kind of, um, I'm a bit, I'm a bit weird because I contemplate death a lot. Like yeah. always, always contemplate the end, but on a grand scale, like I mean the world, like I always think about the world ending. Yeah. Like, not like, like in a bad way, it's just because I know it's an, inev- an, an inevitable fact that will yeah. one day come to be. Yeah. So my head's off in the fucking clouds thinking about that shit anyway. So all I think about is like right now, all I can control, like Ben said, control what's within your realm and just, just enjoy it because I'm not going to be here for long. Is there something specific though? Like, like I'll, really. I'll, give you, I'll tell you guys what I'm trying to say. Like, I, I'm not specific at all for it. No way. Eh? Not for fuck. So there's just nothing fuck. specific driving you. It's just the overall sense of completion. Yeah. Huh. I'm I'm, I'm on a road of pro. I'm I'm like downloading a file, and I'm like ninety percent, like seventy percent through the download, and I got thirty percent left. I'm just keeping going on this track. I see, know. I have see, I have like a. There's a, obviously a grand vision, but I have small motivationary things that wake me up every morning, or motivational. Not motiv- motivationary is not even a fucking word. Motivation. Like I wake up in the morning and I'm like. I want my company to be successful. That's my thought, my motivation to get up and get on my, get off my ass and start working. Of course. But what did you feel 10 years ago in the midst of your bodybuilding? That's why I said, every time you ask me throughout my life, that answer is going to be different. 10 years ago, 10 years ago, if you said, what's your, what's your motivation? I'd be like, I have a picture in my head of what I want to look like and where I want to place. That's my motivation to wake up and get my ass to work, to work every day. So I probably mirror that more now because of where I am in my life situation. But as I'm yeah. saying, that's a specific yeah. thing. Like, and, yeah. and, and the reason is, and people will be like, oh, that's so narrow-minded. But what people don't understand is that vision of that, of that physique and where I would place is what's going to create all the other things. Oh, right? the, money. Exactly. The, the money and the freedom and the success to buy a home with my wife and, and have a good life with my wife where I can travel and do – like, it's, it's weird. Like, your narrow-minded things – expand into all these other things right that, that's because when you achieve I, I i find when you achieve something to a certain standard like something great the branches are really good the branches are great it's like and this is not me trying to be horrible to anybody in life but if you only if in this the scheme of what you're trying to achieve let's say is sport if you only get to here it's not going to open many doors yeah but if you get to here it's going to open doors yeah and it does and, and that's reliant on other people yeah. That's not uh, you have to get there, but it's reliant on other people acknowledging your achievements yeah. and allowing for those achievements to open those doors. Yeah. So, like me and you, there, I've always believed that if you can get to here, then something's just going to fucking fall into place. That's right. It will. Yeah. That's how I feel. I feel like as long as I get that shit downloaded and I get there, my life's going to work out because every time I've done it so far, it's worked. And Ben, That's you don't think you know, none of that is like kind of where you're at? You're kind of like somewhere else. Well, so like I say there's overlaps. It's okay that you are. You just it's a different. Yeah. It's a different no, no, thing. no. I'm 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 happy to disagree. Don't worry about that. I'm just saying like it's <laughs> it's a different mindset that I have, and I might be doing the same movements that you guys are doing, right? Yeah. I'm still getting up in the morning. I'm still going train. Like I'm in a prep, and yeah. I do everything. I won't bother doing something unless I'm a hundred like fucking doing it, right? So I'm ticking every fucking box and I'm not going to social, but like I'm doing the bodybuilder thing because that's what I've decided to do for the next, well, three months now, right? Yeah. So to all intents and purposes from the outside looking in, it looks like I'm doing the same thing that you, James, yeah. every other bodybuilder is doing. I just think my internal motivation has never been driven by quantifiable success, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, because... Uh, it, it, it's a different I'm still trying to still trying to be the best that I can be I don't want to look back on my life and think you're you had all of this and wasted it or, or so yeah that those fears still exist but I just think maybe mine's just less literal because James has 
you know, there's a Olymp the, the, the Olympia, there's this, there's those targets yeah, yeah, yeah. that aim at. And mine, yeah. mine might be broader right now, but I still approach them with the same intent. Like, I'm not very good at competing with other people. Yeah. yeah. That, that doesn't work for me. If yeah. you say, do this against this person, I'm like, I don't give a shit what they're doing. Yeah. I just want to do this here and beat what I can do. So when I squat, for instance, I, most of the time I'm in there squatting on my own. There's no one else in the gym. Yeah, yeah. And all I want to do is beat what the fuck I did last week. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I, I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe I'm just... No, it makes sense. Yeah, but I, I get it. I get it. Um, before we go, I want to do a couple things. So let's get this question out of the way and then we'll do some rapid fire ones. Would you rather get a blowjob from a dude or get pegged by a manly chick? <laughs> I'll get pegged by a manly chick. Pegged by a manly chick, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that too. But that's that's not suck. Like, I mean, they no, both they both suck, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, but still not do. Yeah, yeah. I wonder how Luke would answer that. Because Luke would say something that's like, "Because right. Luke right. would right. Luke would say something like, well, I know I'm not gay, and I don't really want to get fucked in the ass, so I let the guy suck my dick." No, he did say he wanted to try it, so that's his perfect opportunity to his excuse is why I can try it now. All right. Plus, you're gonna feel some stubble when you you're gonna feel some stubble around your balls, oh. and that's not gonna feel good. No one wants that. Yeah. Okay. Let's do some rap. Let's do some rapid fire ones so we can get through some of these questions. But we'll just do like one word answers, or as short as we can. Uh, is it unrealistic to get perfect blood work every time on a cycle, especially with compounds like Trend? Yes. 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 Hey man, been listening to your podcast for the last couple of weeks every day. I just want to say, oh, this is just a comment. Thank you, Lucas. Uh, best supplements to help with off-season bloat. I don't think there's any supplements to help with off-season bloat. I think you need to eat better. If you're bloated, your yeah. diet sucks. Anybody? Yeah, there's I mean, a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah, there's, a, there's too many things going wrong there. Is there is there a supplement to help with off-season bloat? Let's make that that question. Laxatives. No. Laxatives. <laughs> Prioritize your digestion. However you want to take that. Well, I could you could say probiotics. You could say digestive enzymes. Maybe he doesn't have enough. It it, no, it, it depends what the bloat's coming from. Like my mine was from a histamine issue. So And what if the bloat is not his stomach? What if it's his head? <laughs> what if he's got deck in head? <laughs> Deck ahead. I've never heard of that of deck ahead. Um, okay. uh, James, I love that. Uh, talking about, I love that thing you put with you and Skip where you had the, the extra. I know. The, you can't really see mine too bad today, but when, it, when I've eaten a bit of steak, you can really see it. Why is it steak? Because like, you get a pump. Yeah, it gets a prop. What is pump. it? I've never seen what you're talking about. The muscle that on the side of the head's here. Mine, when I've eaten, gets really big. Oh, I've, you Next know what? I've, I have that too sometimes. Yeah, man. Dexter Jackson's got it as well. Oh wait! Yeah, I yeah. got I got a picture of it. One sec. This is what we're talking. <laughs> is, is this what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Like these these muscles right here. And then you got like a horn in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> that's he's got, three, he's got a three dome. Yeah, that is years of steak you are trumping that is. All right. What are some over are hyped or overrated exercises that people like beginners insist on doing? See, this is going to be controversial because Ben likes deadlift, but I'd say deadlift. Really? I was, yeah. You think it's overrated? I, I do. I like it. I love it, but I do think it's overrated. I that's think it's. I don't. Me. I don't necessarily disagree with Ben's you. That I, no, but I grew my back without deadlifts. But I think for a beginner, it could be a good that's, idea. It te for technical terms, it could be great. But I do think. I just think it's a movement that people get carried away with. But that's just me. Yeah, that's not. You know what I keep seeing. The one I keep seeing people get carried away with is the chest press where they're squeezing the plate. And it's always shitty small guys doing it. You mean like this thing where they do this? With the, they're squeezing the plate between their hands? They do it on a Smith nowadays as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. with the fucking, always, with the close grip? Oh, it drives yeah. me nuts. Shit like that. There's always the small cunt doing that. It's never yeah. a 300 pound bodybuilder, right? Never the big fella. Uh, for a bro split, how many exercises for each body part? You know what? I'm going to start ignoring people that say the word bro split because you can suck my nuts. 
Yeah, it's not bro split. I can't listen. I don't give a fuck. I'm really getting. I'm really fucking tired of people like saying bro split because that's what all the pros do. It's a fucking. It's a. It's a pro split. It's not a bro. Maybe someone just just because some one. science cunt fucking came on and fucking showed a study that said, "Oh, this is a bro split. Don't do one body part a day." All the fucking biggest guys in the world do a one body part a day or two. I do too. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's that's what I'm saying. I I, I do what people call a bro split. It's because it's called, uh, Luke did. Can we Luke can we just well. can we just start? We it? all did. Can we start telling people to fuck off that say bro split? And the other thing, the other term I can't stand is bro science. Bro science is another name for fucking experience. Experience. Yeah. Guys with 20 years fucking experience will tell you what they did to be great. And then now some little cunt that weighs 150 pounds in Jabretta textbook is saying, that's fucking bro science. This is the real science. I'm like, yeah, but you weigh 150 pounds. Yeah. I don't fucking care what you have to say. Yeah. I, I will say this, like, I'm a man of science, right? Science will only get you so fucking far. And then you have to ignore science and go, that's not fucking working. Okay. Can I say one, one thing though? One statement? Bodybuilders aren't rude to science people. I'm happy to have... I had Lane Norton on the podcast. I had Dr. Dean on the podcast. I'm happy to have science people on the podcast. It's the science people that are fucking rude to the bodybuilders. They're like, that's bro science. No, that's not bro science. That's fucking experience. Yeah. Right? Can we, can we, I'm also, I'm also yet to see, I'm also yet to see one of these scientists out lift or outgrow one of the bros that's what i'm saying if you fucking know so much how come the how come all the olympia winners were coached by bro scientists and all the fucking be- biggest guys in the world are bro scientists like what the fuck are we talking about right here they just come out with this derogatory shit and i gotta sit here and listen to it because see why, see why it's quicker to read a book than it is to grow 50 pounds of muscle. No, it's because some fucking guy in, a, in, a, in an office somewhere made a study with a bunch of little dudes and they said, look at this study. This study says that you don't got to do morning cardio. Morning cardio is bullshit. And I'm like, I've done it for 20 fucking years. It's not bullshit. Right? Like, I don't, I don't know. It's just, I'm sorry. I'm overly angry about the situation. You have every right. <laughs> you have every right to speak. Well, you are because you said cunt twice in the last five minutes. Well, so. I <laughs> no, listen, <laughs> I, I got into it. I got into a debate. It wasn't an argument. It was a debate with somebody on my Instagram. And he was like, Dr. Dean's so smart. I don't want to listen to these bro scientists anymore. And I'm like, <gasps> well, first of all, Dr. Dean is a fucking genius. But all I said to him was you shouldn't discount what you call bro science because bro science is somebody that has a decade or more of experience yeah. that is telling you what they did to get where they are. Let me, let me put it this way. Dr. Dean has a coach who has less scientific credentials than Dr. Dean has himself. <laughs> and, and actually less bro science. But I don't, but honest to God, man, I, I, I think Dr. Dean's amazing and I think he's fucking brilliant and it's really nice to get, solid evidence to back the things that you're talking about but i would never discount a month living with dorian yates no don't tell me that you're not going to learn more in a month living with dorian yates than you will that you read in a fucking textbook and i'll tell you one thing if you're walking into a gym there isn't a textbook on this planet that can teach you intensity yeah well you know one of the things i love the most about justin harris and actually like Chris Tuttle and like a lot of even John Meadows, you know, a lot of the guys that are like scientist coaches or bro scientist and scientist coaches, they will all tell you. And Ben, you probably say the same thing. They will all tell you that it's great to know science until it doesn't work in the gym anymore. Then it doesn't fucking matter what the science says. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I said. Right? So, so I've, I'm in the middle of my prep and I'm doing things completely different that goes against science and against the theory of what is the perfect way to do something because i'm looking in the mirror and going that's not working i need to do something different i need to do i need to do something that doesn't work for my body not what the book tells me should work for my body yeah Yeah. all right we that was supposed to be rapid fire and i took like 10 minutes on that question so i apologize uh a couple let's do a couple more i'm gonna piss quickly while we do this one you're gonna piss while we do it oh yeah while we do it take us with you take us with you 
He's always in the bath on his fucking Instagram. Just so piss, why are we just, just, now? just piss in a bottle. Is he in the bathroom on his Instagram? He, ha- you know, he, he has bath time in. He takes his phone in the bath with him. No he, bath no, he, no, he doesn't. Let's ask him. No, he doesn't, does he? Yeah. Where? Where? I think it's on his stories more than anything else. And it's, he, no, he, does, he doesn't. We'll do a Q&A and he'll be in the bath answering it. I guarantee you. No, he does no, not. He fucking does. He does That's, a Ricky Gervais. Have you seen, have you seen Ricky Gervais does it? No. Post, he posts in the bathtub all the time. I've done that like once, but I wouldn't do a Q&A in the fucking bathtub. No, I'm getting harassed. Asking. James, are you doing Q&As in the bathtub? Sometimes. Are you serious? Yeah, I do yeah. sometimes. Nothing on here right now, but yeah, sometimes. You don't get shit on for that? No. Can we, can we do the next podcast with you in the bath? Does this say four, four plates for 20 reps? Jesus. That's just, uh, that's just clickbait. <laughs> no, it was, five, it was five sets, right? Or four yeah, sets? It's, it's, it's actually a cluster set. But, you know, oh, it was a cluster set. That's oh, still man. that's still a lot of fucking that's still a lot of reps, man. It's a lot of <sighs> it's you know what I find sometimes it's harder to do twenty reps when you have to stop and start again. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. can be. You know what I'm saying? I agree. So there's no bath time in here right now? Okay. No, no bath time. <laughs> bath time. I gotta see this. I've never seen it before. That's hilarious. I love bath time. The next podcast, do it. Next podcast, James in the bath. Like, <laughs> I'm happy to do it. It just means I'll be on my phone. Uh okay, fuck Mary Kill. I don't know why this is directed at us. Arnold Coleman or Cutler. So imagine you're a woman. Fuck, marry, or kill. Arnold Coleman or Cutler. Uh, I'd marry Cutler. Cut- Cutler's smart. Marry Cutler. Marry Cutler. I'd marry, I'd marry Arnold. He's a fucking yeah. billionaire. But the, he would cheat on me, though, so I don't know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> And then, yeah, I don't even want to get fucked by Coleman. I can't imagine. <laughs> uh, I don't even want to. No, Arnold. Arnold's a, Arnold's a lover. Arnold's not Arnold's a lover. Arnold's very sensitive. Yeah, I see yeah. Ar- Arnold, would be, Ar- Arnold would be demeaning. Arnold, Arnold probably makes them do like bad. Ar- you know the pornos where you see the guy like put his foot on the girl's face when she's bent over? I think that's like Arnold. Arnold does that shit. <laughs> no? Uh, I'm just hoping um, Arnold doesn't listen to this. <laughs> well, I don't think I'll, I'm going to do the Arnold anytime soon, so I can say whatever the fuck I want. Uh, why does Flex Lewis not do interviews? You and him would be great, especially with Guy too. So I've asked Flex, I've asked Flex Lewis like five times to do the show, and he no longer is getting asked because I'm not. He just doesn't want to do it. Yeah, he's not a bit keen. I know he had. I know for a while when he was a Flex MI, he said he had a lot. He couldn't do stuff, but you have no excuse now, Flex. No, no I think he just doesn't want to do it. I don't know don't what it is. Don't want the secrets against Phil. That guy is busy. Yeah, but come on. I'm not sticking up for him. I'm, I'm on Floyd's side. Flex, get yourself on the fucking show. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll do one more and then we'll go. Oh, a train chest. Do you... I don't know what to ask. What do you guys think? We can't see them. <laughs> you, have, you have my fucking Instagram. Um, I don't look at your shit. I'm not going for your shit, lads. Don't fucking lie. You guys are looking at all the questions for sure. I'm checking my pictures. Uh, bodybuilding style, chicken or the egg, which comes first? Size from focusing on hypertrophy and less rest time and strength focusing on low reps, longer rest time. I don't know what this is trying to say. That's I'm, saying, I'm yeah. guessing if you're a beginner, are you going to try and do a ton of volume or stick to heavier intensity stuff to build size? Can you explain the beef between men's physique and everyone else? Who started what? Let's finish with that one. Um, I don't know, but even Arnold gave a pop, didn't he? When the, the, the Arnold Classic, I remember the winner, I was there. That I was, was so bad. That was funny. I thought it was fucking like, I'm like, but, holy shit. Yeah. So if he thinks it. It's gold? It means it's, it's, it's law. He, he, he is it's, the godfather of bodybuilding right it's <laughs> pretty it is pretty true i guess he could he could kind of write the, the script that's what i'm saying so i don't think yeah. there's a beef i think well if there's a beef there it's if there's a beef it's because Jer- jeremy bondia ran his mouth and said that without men's physique bodybuilding wouldn't be as popular or some dumb shit whatever the fuck he said which is completely ludicrous oh, it's just one bad egg. no but i think the other beef which is not really a beef 
I think most bodybuilders are like, you know, like Luke used to say, is like we train legs and they cover their legs and like, what the fuck? It's a physique contest. Yeah, don't say what Luke said. Well, I'm not going to say exactly what Luke said because it's <laughs> only Luke can get away with that. But well, like Sergio called it right as well, right? Like Sergio's assessment of it when you asked him a similar thing. Like they would all be bodybuilders if they could be. If they, you know. I don't think that's, I think my, my thing about it is, first of all, I actually don't care if they want to put their shorts on and go make $5,000 for competing or whatever. I don't, I actually don't give a shit. But if you had to say, if you asked me on the spot with a gun to my head, what's wrong with it? I would say it's a physique contest and you're covering up half your physique. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, so Ben, awesome. yeah, if someone had a gun to your head, Ben, literally said, answer the fucking question. How would you answer it? Like, literally, if you knew you were going to die, if you didn't. That's why I want, like, that for yeah. I would literally had to come to your head and said, tell me what's fucking wrong with it. <laughs> but that's what's wrong, right? Is there, is there something else? They're a little flamboyant. Their, their attitudes, you know I think. <laughs> In my, but, but on a personal level, and I, I'm only talking about my experience of this, all of the top pro open guys that I've hung out with are way nicer people than the physique guys. Well, that's what I meant by their, their attitudes are different. They've got a chip on their shoulder. Like they're trying to prove a point and I, I, I don't see, I don't see that with the open guys. And I've just spent time with a lot of them and they're all, the biggest guys are always the most relaxed, the laid back. But they probably do have a chip on their shoulder because they probably feel like they have something to prove because they don't get the same respect that the bodybuilders do. Yeah. Right. Rightly so. Yeah. They're going to first, motherfuckers. I just think there's an element of, especially with big guys, you res- like effort is recognized, right? If you're 300 yeah. pounds, that's not by accident. Yeah. Whereas you can get a physique guy be in shape kind of by accident, just on genetics, right? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, no one's 300 pounds shredded by accident. Yeah, I don't, I don't, listen, honestly, I don't discount their work ethic. The guys do get shredded. They have pretty crazy physiques. I'm just like, why don't you just dissolve the class altogether? I know it brings them a lot of money, so they won't, but just make all those guys go do classic. Just go do classic, right? Yeah. And then they're every- pretty much the same bodies. Well, yeah. right. So if, you, so if they've now got classic, what is the need? Well, but then th- think about how exciting classic would be. Think about, think about like Andre Ferguson, if you guys know who that is. He's yeah. one of the one of the top men's physique guys. Nice. Think about Andre Ferguson doing classic. You know now, or like Logan Franklin switch from men's physique to classic. You know, like, it'd be good as well because it'd teach him to pose. Well, I just think it would make the entire class uh, deeper. Like it would make because think about it. If you look at the classic division right now, I can only name. I know there's more, so nobody get offended. But I can only name like five guys. Know, well, you two, can name two, yeah. Three, three, three sorry. Yeah, no. I can name like five guys in the classic division that are popular. But if you added all the men's physique guys to it, now you have a really deep division. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Jeremy, but, but, you know, all these people would have to compete with them. So the, to James's point on the posing, why do physique guys pose differently? Why don't they pose like bodybuilders? Even in short, even if you leave it alone, think, let, them, let them go up on their sh- in their shorts but do a front double bicep like normal person. Like why, what's the... Because they're not judged shit? on that. They're not judged on that. They're judged, they're judged on like... Uh, you cut out, Ben. They're, oh. they're, they're judged differently. They're judged on like overall presentation, not pose for pose. So. But you can still present your physique by without doing the flappy shit. <laughs> flappy. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I don't know. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to instigate. I'm just saying... They pull a front double bicep and a rear double bicep, but their hands are different, right? Yeah. Why are their hands different? Why are you doing this? <laughs> just do that. It's the same fucking thing. Just stop fucking around. Anyway. I don't right. understand it. All right. Let's wrap. We've been on for a couple hours. Let's wrap up. We'll, we'll get back next week. Uh, we'll talk some more shit about whoever. <laughs> What do you, you got to go train James? What are you training? Oh, chest. What about you? Are you squatting again, Ben? Um, rest day. Up until, so Thursdays are my rest days. And then as of Saturday, I'm 12 weeks out. So Thursday is going to become a second leg day for me. So on 12 weeks out, you start going six days a week? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take Mondays off. 
squat squat slash quads will become Sunday and hamstring slash some volume work on a Thursday for my second leg day. What are you doing, James? You're doing five days or six days? Oh, fuck it. I don't even know. What am I doing? <laughs> shit. Um, I'm doing like five days, I think. Okay. Yeah. Oh, shit. You know what I did this morning? What? I did I did hit cardio this morning. Really? How's that? I'm into that shit. I do steady oh, state. Soul. My soul was leaving my body. I did. A, I got the road bike, the, that yeah. echo bike. Yeah, yeah. And that, that thing's rock steady. Like, it doesn't fuck it. It's good for it. Like, you can hammer. But... I did only did 10 rounds and then uh, Denise and I went into the dogs for a walk straight after. So we did like, I did 10 minutes and then go off and I'm going to do it on my rest days and like two, three times a week. Yeah. I just steady state, man. Just same. Trotting along. Steady state. Steady state. Think about all my woes. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. Wrap it up. I'll see you guys. Have a good Thank day. You. Have training sessions. We'll do, all sir. right. We'll do. See you later, guys. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.